No, guys, I know I'm late. Look, I apologize. I know I'm late. But a little birdie told me that the, the DEBG documentary dropped. Now, you guys know as well as I do. That's one of the best videos of the entire year. And you guys know that I absolutely love watching and reacting to the DBG documentary. But there's one thing missing. Hey, man, there's no place in the world I'd rather be than here. What can I get you today? Hey, did you hear about the new DBG documentary? The new what? Uh, ne never mind. I got a code for you. Um, 903933. 903933? Nine three three. Correct. Yep. And then on the double cheeseburger, could I just get uh, pickles and lettuce, please? Like, no onions or tomatoes? Only pickles and lettuce? Yes, please. Sure enough. Thank you. What else? That'll be it. Got the food? We're good to go. I got my two favorite things, guys. I got my Burger King for the video that we're going to be snacking on. And I got DBG's the History of NBA 2K22 by team, man. Life is great. I'm going to show y'all the food, man. I'm going to show y'all the food because y'all deserve it, man. Like the fries, I mean, look, they're, 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 they're nothing special. I'll be honest. I'm going to dump them on my plate, though. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't have to deal with all that. And then I ain't get too much because it's still early in, in the morning. And then I got a double cheeseburger. Now, I don't know what a, what a double cheeseburger from uh, BK is going to entail. I, I, you know, just lettuce, just pickles. It don't look that bad, though. I mean, does it look that bad to y'all? I don't think it look that bad. So, we got those two things. We got ketchup on the side, man. And we're going to enjoy the video. Y'all enjoying the video. So, NBA 2K22, my team. An interesting... I'm not even going to call it an interesting year. It was a year where I just felt, in general looking back on it that there was not too many super high points in the year not too many super low points but i will say as far as this <clears> game's <throat> working it probably worked better than any my this game, game was good i've said it i've guessing. said it man there's not like there's not been like outside of luke on next gen there wasn't like a game breaking glitch in which there has been in past years i agree with that i give it not a bad middle to the year not a bad start mm, Burking, not man. a bad mm -hmm. middle but the last season was absolutely horrendous but lads, we're going to be talking about all of it. The highs, the lows. Get your popcorn out. This video is going to be well over an hour. Popcorn. And also, I got Burger King, subscribe. man. We're trying to get the 300K. Yeah, go subscribe to DBG, possible. man. But anyway, let's get Popcorn. On I first. got Burger King. So the pre-launch period actually, in fact, came very, very Triple threat 100 was a W. I don't care. We actually got our first news in September, which was kind of crazy because the game was coming out on September the 9th. Or in September the 10th, which was absolutely nuts. Like, we genuinely heard nothing until the last week before the game. And for us, a lot of people were hyped on certain things. A lot of people got hyped on the gimmicks. There was a new draft mode, which actually ended up being very flawed. And a lot of people were hyped on the gimmicks. I don't care. Rating draft, when the rewards were good, was fun. I don't care. Holographic. It was fun. And honestly, I'm not really going to blame them that much. I called it. Yo, tell me why when I went to Birkin. I asked if they had power aids because I wasn't sure. They literally had like nine different options for power aids. I don't even know where it's at. Oh, here it is. They had like nine different options for power aids, which w. It was in the first dev vlog. Uh, they were gimmicks. But the big thing was that the 100 came out. TTO the 100, a basic concept that ruined an entire game mode for the vast majority. Of I don't care. I like the game mode. I really don't care. I liked it. I mean... The boards were way more rewarding in that than they are now. So. Oh, players. That was what I was really worried about. And I was really worried reading the dev vlog that my team Unlimited and my team Limited were the same. So my team Limited had the same issue where if you miss one week out of six, you basically may as well just give up the game. A lot of other, like, again, the shoe creator was an okay concept, but... I did not like the shoe creator. Like, I miss just having, like, the good Grinches or whatever. I, I, I do not like the shoe creator. I again, don't. I felt it was a gimmick. Logos... I mean, about three solo my team guys got logos this year. But one thing I was really annoyed about was the draft. Because you guys can see from FIFA, if you guys have mm. played any other mode, there's a clear, Burger is good, man. clear way how to do the draft and how not to do it. How to do the draft is what every other game does. And how not to do the draft is what NBA 2K did in NBA 2K18. And they still have some obsession with not giving you an actual choice. So the draft basically became a random team mode. You have to pick two of every three cards you flipped. It is so kind of a random team. It is. Because, I mean, you're going to get a bad player, too. So. five at the one time picked one. You have to flip every card individually. I don't understand what the purpose was. It made absolutely no sense. And basically, they made packing playoffs two instead of a draft mode. Because it wasn't. Then, we got the game. Well, the game launched. And 
Aiden Ross fired upstream before anyone was given the right to stream, before any embargoes were lifted. But because it was Aiden Ross and he had 50,000 people watching him, 2K then lifted the embargo on uh. everybody. We saw straight away that we were getting some like half decent Dom rewards. Like Bob Cousy had been the 95 overall exchange reward from NBA 2K21, so we knew he was going to be all right. We knew Draymond is always I a remember good that Bob in early 2K. Again, his diamond was just god in between. Yeah, those cards were pretty very, good. Very, very excited. Those cards were pretty good. So, yeah, I was really happy. Right. And then we saw the entire set for Colossal. We saw a lot of the new rookies. We then saw that there were so many, and I mean so many cards for collector level. Like, every yeah, it was card crazy. got something, which was cool because last but year... But the, the, the dark, as as far as the end game like reward, was not great. So. And 4,000, that was it. We saw the token awards. Were we that excited? Well, for me, just looking at this, I wasn't really... I they knew were pretty was going to be okay, but I wasn't the most excited about the Pink Dime Token Awards. And then we were all just hawking Shake and Bake's Twitter, waiting for Shake to go and tweet things out because I had no idea who was streaming at this time. It was like 5 o'clock in the morning for me, and people <laughs> were just streaming and posting a bunch of things. So, yeah, it was an interesting kind of uh, end period. And honestly, I was excited booting up my team. I was really I feel like everybody right away should be. Really, really I mean, for the most part. He didn't like Triple Threat 100. So, I liked it. This was more so something that we hadn't seen in other years. The game worked at launch. And that's one of the big things that I want to give 2K props for. Because this was the first time they were like, they literally shut down their support. Their like live chat. Because, well, they thought it was going to be overwhelmed. But this was the f first time that a game really worked at launch. And that's one of the things I got to give 2K props for. For throughout NBA 2K22. Is the game tended to work. Servers dropped at a... Yes and no. I mean, you get losses when a dude quits and you win the game. That's the game being broken. 70% glitch on PlayStation current gen still is in the game. So, I mean, the game works, but there's still, like, game flaws. Like, less this year than ever before. We had less, like, game-breaking things wrong. Heck, like, the biggest thing that I think we could say 2K just completely screwed up on was what they did last Friday, like, two, three days ago when they released a Luka Doncic card and they gave the complete wrong Luka card that was level 40 award. I did not think it was a pretty solid year that actually started off on a half decent note. So anyway, yeah, that is the pre-2K -peri pre period. Now on to season one. This cheeseburger is good, man. So the game started off and I, just like most people, started trying to do a lot of new things. I was looking for holo cards in the auction house, but I logged into this game very, very early had a new zealand copy of the game so yeah there was nobody really online when i was online so there was no real cards on the auction house but one thing i did that look at that a team. lot of people Ew. did was i graded cards something that i thought was somewhat cool and then i realized that there was no actual look to it i think a few of the cards i sent in to be graded i scored 21 points on 100 percent shooting their one game it was like maybe that'll make a difference nope grading was random and that was the biggest problem with this, is that first of all, grading just makes cards look ugly. I didn't mind grading. I feel like grading would be a, you know, more of a value if the MT you got from them actually mattered. But Some it really people doesn't. like it. It's cool if every card's graded, but if not, it makes them all look ugly. It makes a cool card that looks smaller. And yeah, it was something that we were interested in the day it came out. And for me, this was a complete, and I mean complete gimmick in my team. And then we saw the duos actually updated badges. And this was a really cool concept. So you saw like this duo being used by a lot of people, the Steph Curry and Iguodala duo, especially because Steph was the only player that could curry slide in this game. So you were looking at like Steph. Curry slide really didn't matter too much. Goal limitless shout, range. Out, shout out Burger King, man. That was good. In a time where badges were kind of just hard to come by and expensive, this actually was really, really cool. This made duos probably bigger than they had ever been. And even though I still don't remember using these duos, duos great, they really didn't make the most of it as the year went on. Will Chamberlain was the reward. He was good. I don't care what anybody says. At this stage, you still needed to go 12-0 and 0 in Galaxy Opal with SBMM. But one of the good things was, was the SBMM had not been established on day one. So I know a lot of people that in the first two days before anyone's SBMM really got set, anyone played enough games to really get pushed into high SBMM, they got Wilt fairly easily. Wilt was kind of epitomized early game. Shooting didn't matter too much, although it was a lot easier to shoot than NBA 2. It was mash, one. mash, Even mash. Gold, Darvin, Ham was chick. But it was a big game of mashing and interior bigs dominated. So, in general, the game launched with one of the most broken modes I have ever played. 
TTO the 100. I like were this Were the mode. rewards good for going up the boards? Sure. Yes, they were. Thank well, you. Were no, the rewards... That's all that matters, man. Hey, uh, what, what is the point of, of playing a game? To have fun? Okay. I'm sorry, but if I win 10 straight games and the best reward I get is 1,000 MT, it's horrible. The, board, the boards were so much better when it was skilled. No better, for example, than TTO in NBA 2K21. I agree with um, that, but... The big issue, they were like, oh, we want everyone to get a reward even if they lose all their games in TTO. But you got one ball drop total if you lost all your games in this new concept. But in this new concept, if you lost a nail biter, 27 to 25, 25, if you were in a really close game, it was significantly worse than losing a game 21-0. If you went down 22 and, and I get that maybe if you win a game, the worst thing you do is, is give up 20 points or whatever. 21. So it's better. But Or somebody hit a shot to score 23 points on you. You had to quit the game. You straight up, you had to quit the game before the score register because you would only lose 21 points. Like, I get what Winning DBG is saying, did not but it's matter like... in this game mode. All that mattered is how many points you conceded. So if you faced off against a guy who wasn't very good at the game, you had to beat that guy 21-0. If they even scored two points, you would get angry. Again, I think my record while the 100 was a thing at one stage was 37-1. and one, And I used to get so angry playing this game. I've is the close I've ever been. I've thrown a controller once. Thank God I didn't break it because I threw it against the chair. I've thrown a controller once in my life, and it was after winning a game 21 2 after being 19 2 up or being 19 0 up, and I could only concede one point. My opponent chucked the full court shot and it went in, and I nearly smashed my controller. Like that was. Hey man, DBG, get a hand up on the, in, in, in his face on a full court shot, man. What do you want me to say? Uh... Annoying it was. The draft mode was one of the modes where it was like. I actually enjoyed At the, start the draft of the year, mode boring, anytime I played of. it. Eh, maybe not. I mean, the the Glenn reward was good. It's just everybody had the same colossal players, and it was, and there it was were what it was. There a couple of reasons why I like draft mode. First of all, no SBMM, which was very, very fun. Because of SBMM, the people that like are in high SBMM, when you go into a no SBMM mode, it's just torching people. Um, I thought the rewards were really good for playing the draft. I made a lot of MT in my 30-day series through the draft. And one thing, again, that I thought about it was like, once I accepted that it's not a real draft mode, that like you don't actually really get a choice in your team, you just have to pick two of three, and oftentimes, or in almost every time, there's no choice. You just pick their obvious choices the cards, every single yeah. time. So I kind of enjoyed because like you get the three players right that are all like the promo set, and they're probably gonna be three of your best players. So a lot of the players you actually pick don't even play. Playing mode, I That's think it's a garbage mode. And I stand by it. Like, it is the worst draft mode we've ever seen. Actually, second worst. Pack and Playoffs was the worst draft mode. But this was more like Pack and Playoffs 2.0. This was Pack and Playoffs, except you had a bench instead of just a starting lineup. So it was a slightly better version of Pack and Playoffs 2K18. It was still a terrible draft mode as a draft mode. But in terms of gameplay, I, I did kind of enjoy it as the year went on. Then to start off the year, we did get the Colossal Packs. And the annoying thing was for me is that, like, yeah, these Colossal Packs were great, but like these Sapphires were better than the vast majority of Amethyst Day 1 cards. So like these promo cards were better than almost all the base set cards, and that shouldn't be the case on Day 1. We shouldn't get a promo I, I card get what on Day DBG 1. Is saying Regardless of what's here they are, that are better than like an Amethyst, that are better than all the other cards. Like the Rubies, that freaking Dame Loader was by far, yeah, by Dame far so better good. than any of the, um, Dame was the point cards Zeus. that you could get in the game, by far. I mean, a Goat Mirror Godson might have been like similar, but like that Dame was the best offensive player. People also used use the theory. Kemba. Dame Lillard behind right? the back at that stage was what Scotty behind the back is now. They then went and patched that. Yeah, they fixed that. So which there was, was a Shaq card that I read a lot of people read it like. The only issue was the his stamp. He literally could not he run up and down 15. the court. I mean, he, he got Gatorade symbol in two and a half minutes, but he was the only player to set screens because at this stage in the game, you couldn't connect on a screen. That's and Serge Ibaka was also with Luka Doncic event card. IJ Josh was the first person to get him. We all thought this card was a bum. I'm not going to lie. We all thought he was a bum. No one realized that Luka couldn't be contested on next gen for quite a while. And everyone who used him on current gen was like, this guy's release is absolutely worthless. Everyone who used him on next gen was like, oh, this guy just doesn't move right. He's a bum. But no, if we'd known that, we all would have got him. It's probably then true. we got some really, Looking really good cards it. from RG. Gus the Bus was we so good. We got Ron Boone for TT Offline, who was really good. We got... Um, What's his name? Glenn Robinson for the draft. It was really good. And we also got Gus uh, Gerard, who was one of the best power forwards in the game. These I three cards Gus, were really man. good. The problem is they were RNG, and you weren't guaranteed game. The most 
and one of the people got was ghost a lot of people had him. I, I i don't like the rng term for a lot of this because like my whole thing is glenn yes you're it's rng but if you play enough you can get glenn same thing with gus and same thing with Ron, Ron Bone. It is random, but eventually you're going to get him if you play enough. That's just the fact. I mean, and then there was Kyrie Irving. The as far as token awards went, while Serge Ibaka was by far the best of the token awards, and Kyrie Irving may not have even been the best. I got artist, so fried by Kyrie else. so and many a times. A lot of people cooked with Kyrie Irving. I've been, really, really I got fried more by Kyrie this year than anybody else. Points. I remember playing against JB, and he torched me with Kyrie Irving. And you guys can see there a rare clip of the Kyrie Irving behind the back before it was patched. That behind the back wasn't too bad. Now Kyrie Irving's behind the back is literally one of the worst it's behind the backs in the game. Then we have their domination awards. DBG me, loves Bob Pettit. Bob he is Pettit. not I good. I was in my bro. squad till like literally November, but I think Bob Cousy was a nice card as well. I think Draymond Bob Pettit was not good. I'm sorry. The game was good. Um, I think TJ Warren was someone who had really good stats but sucked in game. Richie Guerin was all right. And Richie Jamal was Wilkes, good. Man, that card just sucked. Let's not talk about Jamal Wilkes. Then they announced primetime packs. These were packs that were released at a completely different time. 4 p.m. I did not like primetime. I'm sorry. Prime, I did not prime like time. I assumed that this concept didn't work out well because they scrapped it after season two. But I went into panic mode because I thought every pack was going to be released then, which would have been awful for me. And a few days later, we got the shooting Matumbo. 2K basically basically said you know what yeah you... i remember i was out playing basketball when i saw this tweet and i said no way right he came to the game screw realism we're going to make the kambe matombo a shooter yeah and i mean that they literally made a shooting to kambe one week into the game in what was one of the most overpowered drops we have ever seen so first of all i mean yes but it's not <laughs> Some people still argued Wilt was better than Matumbo. Some people argued Dame was better than these new point guards. So it was overpowered, but it wasn't the like... The Joe Ingles, if you didn't Evo, was one of the best goal cards in the game. I don't know. You got a ridiculously like OP time. Duncan Robinson for his time because he had a god tier shot and he had a release on quick. You had Darius Miles, who was one of the best small forwards in the game, period. I, I also got to realize we didn't have much during this James time, Worthy, right? who was super effective because post-spinning was so good in that game. So a lot of these cards time, were the top do, cards in the game. Spin. You had Fred Van Vliet, this dude was Zeus. who was one of the better point guards in the game. Fred was Kawhi, Zeus. He was the best lock in the game. You had D-Rose, who still had the D-Rose left-right before the left-right was patched. Yeah, that was and then big guard. Kembe Matumbo, who was by far... He was literally just Will Chamberlain with a jump shot. This is one yeah, of... He this was. will go down for me as one of the best batches of cards for the year. Just kind of forgotten about because of how early it was. But every card here was good except for Peja, who, su who sucked. Peja was awful. Yeah, Peja was not good. And then Aiden Ross. Why is Aiden Ross on screen? Aiden Ross went and played my team. And he spent a grand total of fifteen hundred dollars. Like, why do I? Why do I Derek not Rose remember this? And never got Derrick Rose. He never got him. He got multiple Dikembe Mutombo's, who was more expensive than Derrick Rose. But he spent fifteen hundred dollars specifically on a Derrick Rose and didn't get him. So that basically that's crazy. Again, for me, it just sums up the way my team was. Like people. Really that is were so much happy. money. People were really not happy. And for me, <sighs> I don't think buying packs early in the year is smart. I actually really think that that is one of the least smart things you can do. There's no need to buy packs early in the year, especially is where you can more than survive if you're no money spent. But Aiden Ross... Okay. I don't know if that's true because... Um, I guess some cards are cheap, but making MT when you have no MT is impossible. It up like Nearly Saturday impossible. Year, so I not don't even know. getting a diamond in $1,500. I, which I, is I, I will never recommend buying packs. Crazy. But then we got the next Monday. A really interesting concept that we never saw after season one. I really liked it. So it was the Lifetime Agenda Awards, and you basically got three different versions of Daryl Griffith. I hated this. So you got the Emerald, then you had to do a bunch of things. I think DBG liked Ruby, this. I hated this. you had this. to do a bunch of things with the Ruby to get the Diamond. So basically, it was like an Evo card, but you got different cards along the way. A little bit like what FIFA did in... I did like more, this. It did it more so in FIFA 21. It was I feel like cool nobody concept. got it. I really wish we saw more of it. I did and not this Daryl like Griffith card was one of the better two guys in the game. Because and there, I feel like nobody did this. So he like, what's the point? Easily, easily in like the top six or seven shooting guys in the game. Because he had that base. Yeah, he was. He dunked really well. He, he was good. Defender. Didn't come with a lot of badges though. It was a bit of a problem. Didn't even come with like quick first steps. So you did have to give him some badges. But he was again a really, really nice card. And it was a cool concept. Then we got Signature Series. So these cards in game were, I mean, they were meh, they were okay. But the big thing was, was that this Larry Bird card, we all thought when we saw Original Owner, we thought there was going to be some like event for him. So we knew he came from events. We knew that much. 
and we thought that when we heard event cards, we were like, oh my god, event, we're, they're gonna be like, you're gonna be able to grind for Larry Bird this week, it's gonna be the coolest thing ever. So we all were fully exp I I honestly don't remember this. I, I thought, I, I don't know, maybe I missed it, but I don't re ever remember thinking Larry Bird was gonna be free. No, maybe I did, I don't know. Um, because the stats weren't, you know, I, I didn't think they were that great, but I don't really Correcting remember that. This Larry Bird card to be like grindable. And we were all super excited. And then it turned out that the event was literally just cards this, though, and packs. Man. It was an event card that you could buy. Not only did I get Burger King. Girl, just maybe breakfast. Look at, look at, look at this, man. Cards, which was about extremely annoying. gain about not 100 a pounds. Be your biggest with. loser, man. I literally what threw in the world? The year, there was not a single... Er as far as I'm aware, you couldn't earn event cards for any players except for the mural for Vince Carter. That was the only earnable event card. Then we got ML Carr and Ron Hart. Or say Ron Harper and uh, Louis Dampier. Louis Dampier was ML Carr was a complete lockdown defender. He I see wasn't Gus. that bad. But... I actually think that I was a very good player to replace Gus with, even though Gus ML was better. Was good. ML was a beast. Replacing Gus is crazy, Ron, though. Or say not Ron Harper, Louis Dampier. I don't know why I'm reading it as Ron Harper. Louis Dampier replaced Ron Boone. Ron Boone was a beast. Louis Dampier was a scrub. He was terrible. I didn't he say uh, Louis Dampier was, was not good. He was a bona fide scrub. He was so, so bad. Later on that week, 2K advertised that they were going to be giving us Dunktober packs. They were like September to Dunktober. And we were like, okay, what are they going to give us in the packs? They then showed Dirk. And we're like, dumb. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, what is going on, man? Dirk is just Duncan crazy. Deutschmann. I have never, never heard of a German being referred to as a Deutschmann before. I'm pretty, I've... That's, I've heard that as a surname. I've never actually heard. Maybe I'm wrong with that. But um, basically, we all I thought that there was going to be some sort of like Evo concept where you could Evo Dirk Nowitzki into being a dunker. They also advertised that there was going to be like multiple, multiple uh, pink diamonds. So like I was there like kind of expecting Dirk to have like... A I high, did like Vince Carter out of this set, but this I mean, was It turned a bad out set. that no, Dirk Nowitzki had like a 45 dunk. They were giving us three pink diamonds, which was kind of crazy because at this stage in the game, I don't think we had seen a pink diamond in packs. So I never felt like there was a reason why we had to go from no pink diamonds in packs to three in one pack. Dunktober was here. Not I guess Oscar was okay, but I mean, you look up and down. Kobe was good too, but I don't know. This was a good set, but it wasn't because of the pink pack, diamonds. To be honest, like Donovan Mitchell and Josh Smith were the two best until we found out about the god that was Dunktober Jokic, but we didn't figure out about him for a while. <laughs> Kareem was okay. Vince could shoot. Vince was chick. Kobe was all right. Vince was tough. The only tough. problem was, I don't, I don't understand. Like, most of these guys couldn't dunk. It was really confusing. Like, Giddy wasn't a good dunker. Um, Schroeder literally couldn't dunk in game. I never understood why this was called Dunktober. Like, a bunch of these guys literally could not Yeah, dunk. that doesn't even make sense. Level 40, Pink Diamond Metal came out. I think Cobra Phenom was the first person to get this card. And Melo Cobra Freedom, a, shout out him. He used to stream really consistently. I think he got another job, but shout solid. out him. Like, he was a car that you could legitimately use till season three, season four as a cone. He wasn't like the be all and end all best player in the game when he came out. It wasn't like he was just absolutely like torching people. He, he was, was good, good though. We got limited warm up rewards Probably the best this season. Small forward in the game. Again, like we got them in season one, we got them in season two. I'm not really going to overhype. I think we even got him in season three, but... So there is no reason to give us limited warm-ups. I'm sorry. It's a waste of good. time. Like Corey Kiss was really good for his time. That is a waste of time. Um, I'm sorry. But that was really it. Like, or, um, that's it. Dennis Smith Jr. was good, but he really went great. Flash 2 then came in. And IT Davis, was Isaiah tough. Thomas, who was by far the best point guy in the game. And a lot of good cards. Like, even this Jay Crowder was a nice 3 and D card. Tyrese Halliburton could move a little bit. With now shooting. Harden was I didn't tough. like Dominique. Scotty was a beastly defender. <clears throat> Harden and this was, was so after tough. they patched Scotty Pittman's behind the back to turn it into what used to be Dame, which is AKA Pro 3. AD was a card that I didn't like because he couldn't rebound, but a lot of people really liked him. So I we like got AD. a lot of really good cards in this. AD and well. Weber range. And then we got what I thought was the coolest concept was if you won five eliminate games, you got James Harden. You got James Harden himself. And this he was, was good. One of the best cards period in this game. In my opinion, probably the best shooting guard in all of my team. No. He was just... Totally he was not better than Vince Carter. I'm no. sorry. He's, he, he had like not. the hard and shuffle. He had unblockable dunks. He, had he was good though. That was Definitely a time. complete uh, shooting guard. easy to stop. There was a reason why people were so hyped on that like opal hard and the diamond hard. And this card was basically... 
the only difference between this card and the Diamond Harden was that the Diamond Harden had like every badge this Way card better had like, silver, the Diamond Harden gold. And you couldn't, this was like a 2k20 card where you couldn't add badges to him at all. So like every other glitch card could could get any badge in the game. Like that was the thing with glitch cards. Is, oh, you can give them any badge in the game. But like he was the he was a glitch card. You couldn't give him any, which was the complete opposite. But this hard. Yeah, he had done like bronze and silver badges card. that you couldn't even. And something that again, I wish we got more of adjust. on Fridays. Just grind for a card. They then went and released limited edition, which was like guaranteed, guaranteed pink diamonds. They I did said not there like going to be like eight at all. Insert or six inserts throughout the weekend. There's going to be eight total pink diamonds. Which again was kind of crazy because at this stage in the game we had four pink diamonds. Like there was either four or maybe five pink diamonds. I think maybe one of the Tuesdays had a pink diamond. But you were getting pretty much doubling, even nearly trebling the total count of pink. But what I would kind of come back to that is I get it sets a bad precedence for pink diamonds. But most of these pink diamonds were not good. MJ, Ben Wallace, Gilbert, pink like these cards the were not good. Well, ultimate pink diamonds in the game. From just these one packs then to end the season we did go and get our limited reward and this is another one where it's like just like luka Doncic, had we just known how glitchy devin, devin booker, booker was, was good like devin booker was one of those players that like nobody really used he didn't have a great stat people knew more about booker than luka though like i got fried a lot by booker never by luka early on That's in this d book fried me kept getting cooked by him he couldn't play any defense but what devin booker could do is he just got had this really quick release and he just became really hard to contest so this is the first player that we were like, we don't understand why this guy is so hard to guard. Like he shouldn't, he couldn't really dribble. Um, he had a release that a lot of other players had, but he was just tough to stop. I, I got him on my account and I felt that he was a pretty good He was good so guard. good. I didn't really um, use he him that really much. Good. I didn't really use him in my squad because he couldn't play defense. I preferred like using an ML car, but I got cooked so many times by this Devin Booker. And I know a lot of people got cooked by Devin Booker. He I got I got cooked plenty by this card, man. That great at anything. There were some guys on Xbox that knew really what they were doing with him. We then got another uh, one of the lifetime agenda cards in Daryl Dawkins. So DeAndre, DeAndre Dawkins, Jordan wasn't DeAndre bad. Jordan. We had he was DeAndre not bad. Jordan, I, don't, I, don't, I will not take DeAndre Jordan. Easily Jordan's a top five center in the game. He was he good. Shoot at the center position. He was good, man. And that was the one thing he couldn't do. He couldn't shoot at all. But he was basically like almost identical stats to Will to the worst player build. And for free, this guy was a damn beast. Now we are on to season two, the dev blog. Literally, the only things that I cared about were the fact that they had changed uh, Unlimited so that you'd no longer have to go 12 and 0, you had to go 12 and 4, which is a really cool concept. Yeah, the SBMM completely tightened up. If you guys played this mode, you guys know season two was the worst for SBMM. And I know a lot of people like the change to only you get 16 wins to get the final reward. I just think that what is the mode to play for competitiveness now? Oh, well, there's skill based match me. Winning 12 games out of 16 is not that hard. I know. Uh, uh, they also changed 100. It's just, I don't know, it's man. Huge. I know DBG's going to sure like it. Sure, there was new know. domination. Sure, there were a few gimmicks, but. It's just like casual. For season two, those big things were the biggest changes. For casual. They launched season two with the current series two set. Again, or current set. Not a great set of cards. And that's one of the things that I'm disappointed about. Like, 2K can very easily make these cards good by just making them the equivalent of their. Maybe you can just give them a few gold badges, give them a few half badges. These cards always suck. They're horrible. I understand why. There's no reason. Like, I understand them not being as good as promo cards, but they don't need to suck as much as they do. <laughs> like, they didn't suck this badly in, like, 2K19. Heck, they weren't even this bad when they were, like, sapphires in 2K18. Then we got a signature series drop for Curry. I felt, felt that this was one of the most disappointing drops of the... I mean, look up and down it, Okay. D12 for an inside center was incredible, yes. Curry, not great. JB, not great. He was okay. LaMarcus Aldridge, bad. Bruce Bowen, not good. Juwan Howard, not good. Ruby's not good. Again, I mean, it was not good. It was a Dwight Howard. That was an event card. What was the event? Open packs for cards. Rewards-wise, the lower rewards weren't the greatest, in my opinion. Molin was fine, though. I genuinely didn't feel that. Stoudemire there was, was some horrible. good cards. Obviously, and again, in packs, Jalen Brown was pretty good. Nothing really on the way to level 40. 
I thought was good at all. But we did get Paul Salas. Paul Salas, Salas was incredible. The only issue was that he was rare as Terry Dishinger, and no one ended up getting him. Gary Payton was the best unlimited reward we had maybe seen since NBA GP was the dope, man. Rice. He was so good. And then Kevin Garnett was a good level 40. I didn't like him, but no, he was a really, really good card. A lot of people had a lot of success with him. Well, I wasn't the biggest fan. KG was really good, man. We then got a kind of gimmick thing, but it was cool. The player coaches. It would have been funny if Allen Iverson had been like dressed like this out on the court. That would have been cool. But player coaches were in the game. Were they something that mattered? No. Was it an interest? Where was it a gimmick? Yes. Was it an interesting gimmick? Sure. I'm not gonna complain about it. The video on it got me a lot of views, so I can't complain. <laughs> showdown rewards came out, and my god, they're worse than anyone thought. So a lot of people thought you were gonna get actually good rewards for showdown. Sure, you got 15,000 XP for season the Hall of Fame badges early on were important 15, too. 15,000 XP really, really mattered. Like 15,000 XP from like season five onwards was nothing, but that really did matter for season three. And then after showdown, we got like we got a lot of other just nothings, like donovan mitchell i'm pretty sure everyone got donovan mitchell or another amethyst like they couldn't even give a diamond out yeah like, the players you got were bad diamond out for showdown not gonna lie but they couldn't even give a diamond the only thing i can take away is the only reason you do this is for the hall of fame badges i mean or the xp that's really it. um amethyst was the player card so showdown was for me a massive massive disappointment i felt that there was absolutely no reason for anyone to do showdown unless they really did just enjoy grinding the game to grind the game sure hall of fame badges is it but I mean, they weren't worth that much. They then released NBA Moments cards into the game through the primetime packs, which is a kind of interesting concept. Again, one of these Moments cards is 27,000 MT right now. But primetime kind of got a little bit of a boost. A lot of people, more people were open those. Primetime was not good, cards, though. Which did make it kind of I just don't think anybody loved it. They released masked cards for Halloween. W. Again, I like this. I don't gimmick. care. And this is one of the things I have with this year is that nearly all the things they did were gimmicks. Y'all can say y'all don't like mask cards, but the fact that they wore a mask in game is cool. If you're I don't someone care. that really likes these type of gimmicks, cool. then more power to you. Like things like grading cards, putting masks on cards, signature signed, putting a signature on a card, making the same card twice. That um, doesn't matter, but them having a mask in game is cool. That's like different. Within making the same card twice. Like so much of this year has just been gimmicks. And I've not been a big fan of the just gimmickification <laughs> of my team without actually changing anything to mode just throwing gimmicks at us and hoping we like them a lot of people did like the mask concept and i think that might just be me so then this was a really cool concept that i wish they did more of so we got moments, this was essentially cool. moments cards this basically if they cool. hit a certain thing they ended this up getting cool. an evo so the cool. only thing with tyler hero was that neither of these guys had evos tyler hero hit three three points in the first quarter and none in the last <laughs> three and then deandre didn't even play that nice then we ended up getting NBA 75th players. We thought we had a vote, so we were really looking forward to like voting for Giannis. Turns out that we had to vote for someone completely different, and NBA Liga 75 Saturday, so we got horrible. some good cards. This pack drop was god tier. So again, like releasing 75 and Flash, uh, David Robinson basically making them the exact same card. I don't see the purpose of that. There we is none. just released them as a 75th card in these flash packs. I don't get it. Again, another kind of gimmick. But like Eric Snow was a beast. Hassan Jim was a beast. Trey Young, Newman Newsman, 250. Clay was maybe the best player in the game. That Honda was even solid. And he wasn't Rob's great, but the game he was until solid. Christmas, so a really good batch of cards here. This Clay Thompson, man, he ran the show. Like, D-Rob was probably the best player in the game at this time. I mean, but yeah, like, this Diamond Clay. Clay Thompson was just by far the best of any two guys. Because he could dunk, he could move, he could run. He had a release on quick timing, which was super rare for that time. He had... Uh, shifty dribble style. Kobe size up, right? Shifty dribble style didn't matter too much back then because the left right was still a thing. So the moves to make shifty really bad now weren't basically used because he was still left right. They then released a huge batch of moments cards early enough in November. But this was kind of... Look at the cards here. I mean, these cards are horrible. Though. The issue with moments cards was that they had hyped up the... Like promo cards have been so hyped that like a moments batch was really not worth anything like none of these cards other than rubio were worth anything and even rubio wasn't that good at that so they can release all these moments but no one's gonna get hyped because I, the cards just in general yeah i feel like they need to make these cards a little better not the greatest oh, we then got simple. guaranteed pink diamond packs again limited edition a lot of people were excited about them but for me it was like a limited edition was just kind of there there to be there i can't even remember who was in this second batch it mattered that little I think Jordan was one of the players, maybe. But we also, somebody leaked that 2K were putting in moments um, super packs. And these packs actually didn't come out for ages. 
which meant that like everyone was selling their moments packs moments cards for super packs i don't even remember these they then went and released another flash pack again a this really, was a good, really good weekend we got a lot of free Mikhail cards Bridges was so it seems like most of the times they were releasing flash they were releasing something free we got a bunch of like win streak players and again the annoying thing was that there's no point when you're releasing 75th cards releasing two of the same cards i just didn't like that concept but yeah we got like vooch for the wins but we which, got win streak cards which i guess you didn't even need to win the games if you just shut up you got the cards i didn't like the win streak concept because not everyone i don't understand not everyone should get a reward but i think there should be a like reward where like if you put in time you should get the reward anyway like if you play 40 games you should automatically get the reward even if you can't win five in a row in that 40 games Hey, then i guess but i just don't know this was a disaster just in game randomly released a my team festival this like is a we were like halfway through day one when they called it a my team festival and i'm telling you nobody even realized nobody even realized that there was anything going on the biggest thing that happened this week wasn't even announced this was apparently meant to be a my team festival nobody could care less it was a bunch of stuff that we were already meant to have seen just in a normal week literally like, it was maybe the not, uh it wasn't even a good free hall of fame badge the week where they announced know. content calling it a festival and it wasn't even that great a week especially things that were advertised we then also got like a terry rogier so the first moments agenda card they gave us so many in 2k21 the first and only our uh. only regular moments agenda card before moments of the month came out was terry rogier moments this year was just not it was i don't terry know what they did rogier but moments he this year were not terrible. it man. He was terrible. I got him, but he was terrible. Then on the Wednesday, yes, Wednesday of this week, they released Mystic Packs. Meet's Thanksgiving was on the Thursday. They wanted to release Mystic Packs. This was the most juiced pack job of the year. The Sapphires were god tier. Freaking Simvular, Isaac, Troy Daniels. I mean, yeah, look at this. And then you got Wang, and then you got Dino, Eddie Jones. Even that DeJounte was solid. Gave us the GOAT, OJ Mayo, and Wong Zhizhi. The big Wong was unstoppable. DeJounte was good. Dino was fine. Eddie Jones was a beast when the few players in the game were hot. Stockton Except wasn't good. Drazen Petrovic had half range extent. He was the first player in the game to have that. Everybody loves Drazen. I did not love him. Giannis was a very, very good power forward. T Mac was meh. And Hakeem was a great lock in. So, even like, I didn't really like Giannis, but this was an incredibly good batch of cards. That was, yeah, that was a good drop. The Friday then came and Jamarant came out. This was the last Friday of the season. So, obviously, the limited reward is going to be out on that day. Which was Ja Morant, who was a super, super interesting card. He was fine. Because if he had to come out at the start of the season, he would have been a beast. But, like, Peyton just completely outclassed him. I had Ja and Peyton as my two-point guards for a while. Didn't really like Ja. Loved Peyton. But it wasn't bad by any means. Then on the Friday, ja one announced to great. everybody they released these Black <laughs> Friday packs for one day. And everyone was like, okay, okay. They've got, like, these really, really good super packs with, like, all the best cards. And they weren't, as far as super packs went, they were okay price-wise. And they were actually... Like, in comparison to other cards, the odds were really, really good. But then, throughout the day, they released so many packs. It was, like, guaranteed flash packs, guaranteed diamond and pink diamond packs. Uh. They released so many just ridiculously good packs for, like, one hour. So, all the other packs were, like, limited to 10,000. And they all sold out in, like, 20 minutes. They all sold out so, so See, like, fast. I don't... I know... I and the biggest of all I of remember these some guaranteed of these, but... pink diamond packs. So, these packs were 35,000 BC... Like Zion, you could, you saw him here. They were only available for one hour, but no, these packs were gone in 20 minutes. They were gone so quickly. You got all the limited edition players, and what? They yeah, did I didn't do, rip any of these. Pushed a bunch of them, like a bunch of the like bad pink diamond cards down to like 30,000 MT. It was crazy how cheap they all were. Um, like pink diamonds had been 100k MT before this day. They were down to like 30 40k for like five or six of them which was really really mad and right before the end of season two 2k went and patched the side to side again i can't really show any clips of me really using it too much because i was never the greatest dribbler but it's something that i just wanted to note that a lot so of yeah the side to side got patched later on the walk back which was a killer move early on got patched earlier than this i believe these, but... a lot of cards became instantly worse because 2k patched the ability to left right well, to laterally burst in you could still do it but it was just a little harder or, and, and it's not really a left right at that point season but. three came out with a dev blog and again there was not much said in the blog clutch time was the big new addition a lot of it was talking about like oh we're going to be giving some more player coaches this is who your level 40 is 
And we really weren't I don't excited. care. Clutch Time was because a W. Because while Clutch Time was a great game mode, I mean, freaking Iverson was a level 40 reward. But there were some good cards that did come out in seven three or season three was horrible. Was what but I felt really changed the game. Like time my, was my game mode of choice, the game mode that I enjoy playing the most, because well, if I'm not having fun, I can just it's only like two minutes in a game. And I don't need to sit through half an hour for a game. If I want to play for twenty minutes, I can play two games of this. If I don't, if I don't have an hour to sit there and play two K, I can actually go and play Clutch Time. Whereas you just if you don't have an hour to sit there and play you can't really play unlimited you just don't know how long it's gonna take to nice play job bbg a really great new addition into the game mode. yeah clutch time was so, good man then we got probably the worst pack drop ever we got not maxed out where a bunch of people got 99s and stats that were already gonna get 99s in maxed so out was bad guys. Got 99 three point like it was sure bad. maxed out might be the game, worst like drop all year long Aaron gordon got a 99 dunk and so did wiggins both of them had cards in the game with 95 plus dunks you had Aaron Gordon, or saying Aaron Gordon, you had Alex Cruz who got 99 pass perception. Like, really? The Kenbe <laughs> with 99 block, his Ruby had like 94. We got 99 free throw, JJ Reddick. A card <laughs> that will never get to the free throw line having a 99 free throw made no difference. Yeah, Max, that was, was bad. A lot of other like, Tim Duncan, this is host the control, worst, who cares? Worst pack drop we have ever had in my team. And yeah, it was, it was awful. It was awful. Like, reward really card cares? wise we got some really really good ones lads like this set like even Dan Murray for limited was good Drummond for draft was okay didn't really like the unlimited reward but Collins was great um reward for tokens Cliff Robinson was a beast for seven Cliff was good but I, I mean a lot of people have him up more than he should have been he was good though TTO. like Iverson was a terrible level 40 though horrible my god Iverson was terrible like, even CJ McCollum was not bad, like, on the way to level 40, though. So, rewards-wise, I liked it. I liked the push mm. time rewards. I like a lot of the rewards. rewards were pretty mid, game, I would say. Or in this season. I didn't find it to be a bad season at all. I know a lot of people didn't like season three at I all. I did not like it. I didn't think it started off. Clutch like, time was good, but the rest was horrible. Like, Michael Red was a freaking beast. He was like Ray Allen, but ten times better. Like, Ray Allen had come out without, didn't even have half-range extender. Didn't even have his release on quick or anything. But like Micah Red had Ray Allen release. He was taller. He was a better dribbler. He could. I know, but Diamond Clay was better, in the game. And he had half range extender. So like Micah Red is what that Ray Allen card in Max there should have been. He For a free card though, Michael Red was good. Yeah. Obviously, getting him now in clutch time is not going to be a great card, but he was him when he came out. But the market actually shot up. Cards that were going for like 250k were suddenly going for 500k. Like cards went from being somewhat expensive to very expensive i like the and look at how like the difference right there between a 10 hall of fame d rob and a six hall of fame everybody loved how the cards fame are kind of hard way that i remember buying for 30k mt at the end of season two because a lot of people sell their cards for the end of season and the maxed out drop was so bad it was so bad that like within four or five days that card was 80k <laughs> i was making so much mt of just selling my cards then they actually scrapped the primetime concept and just released nba 75 cards with moments and I say NBA 75 with moments because you can see this is like 7th of December. I think this is the last ever. This might be the last time 2K released moment card. I think they released Kevin Durant by himself. They did. I remember But like that. 2K just stopped. They straight up just stopped releasing moments cards in this game. And then the UK and Ireland page ended up leaking the Icedale packs. Basically, they posted a wrong graphic. You guys can see that they um, posted a graphic of the packs that were just... I just went over. However, they completely forgot to, uh, or they put in the wrong like press release, and they leaked what the iced out packs were. A few days later, 2K talking about the NBA 75 set during these packs actually mentioned Reggie Miller and Charles Barkley. We all went crazy, thought they were in the game, and the next day they took this part out of their um, their write up, which was disappointing. It was extremely disappointing. Yeah, I remember that getting iced like, out hyped packs out came a out bit. and. While they nothing. were significantly better than maxed out, they were again not great. Bro, Other season, Dr. J, this is a very season good three was horrible. I don't care. Season like, three was genuinely horrible. Two K just in general were not in a good spot at the minute. When Steph Curry broke the three point record, they gave a bunch of uh, agendas for one Hall of Fame badge instead of doing what they did when Russell Westbrook broke the triple double record by giving Russell Westbrook at like an Evo card where you make... Do you remember that Russ Evo? That was crazy. That Evo was so and you should But it was still something more. To maybe even a 93 overall. I didn't even expect us to give them to give us a pink diamond for Steph. I just wanted like a diamond Steph or I just wanted some acknowledgement of Steph and Curry in this game. But there was a big, big issue with that and this is one of the problems that 
I have with 2K is they're so based around their promo cards that when something happens in real life, they can't do anything about it. It's true. So when you see a card this that has true. a god tier game in real life, or like, again, things like all star moments, when we saw Kay Cunningham get an absolute scrub card, we knew we were going to get a better Kay Cunningham card. And that's one of the issues with this was that Steph Curry did something historic in the NBA. But because 2K had planned on Christmas Day to give us a Steph Curry card, they didn't want to give us any sort of free Steph Curry. They didn't want to give us a moment Steph Curry. They didn't really want to acknowledge it by a card in the game, which is why I really don't like certain things they do with the promos. So then coming in to the middle of December, we got a domination. Don't even get me started on and this domination, man. This was horrible. And this domination was homecoming dumb. We got significantly less tokens than we got for NBA. This domination was literally we got horrible. Basically the same amount of packs. We didn't get very much. And we got a Manu card who, although I loved Manu, like peop most people hated this Manu card. I was his number one fan. I'm gonna still say this domination was the worst. Manu is not good. The least worth of domination we have had. I did it for the Hall of Fame badges, obviously for 250k, but for anybody else, I would say maybe do not, like the Harden. Like it was not worth it. I don't think the current Dom for Harden was worth it at all but like this dom wasn't even easy that was the worst part oh i thought it was on half well no it was pretty easy then it was pretty easy but and uh, then we got hoopsmas which was a joke oh this my god hoopsmas was a joke so like they, they they come out with these and promos hoops. and they're just horrible we Not got promos, like the my team like festival which events. was a day where 2k gave out a bunch of locker codes a bunch of free content a bunch of grindable content a bunch of things in packs it was really cool to start hoopsmas and then the rest of the hoopsmas was just like free free packs we didn't really care too much but this year's hoops was packs instead of giving us like guaranteed players all it did was give us like candy canes which traded in for presents and if you didn't get enough candy canes like candy canes were worthless you need like four candy canes to get a present the presents could be exchanged for goods but if you only got three candy canes the three candy canes were worthless you had to just sit there and discard them it was bad or just send them into the exchange to get nothing out of them it was the worst event we have ever had on my team you say you see a diamond contract there? Yeah, we had one diamond contract. You could play though for I think you could play for candy canes or like get them out of triple threat. Then we got a really like that, actually still, good batch of cards. It was bad. The signature series packs for Kobe Bryant. Yeah, this was a good So match. Magic Johnson was, was the okay. first point guard in the game that really allowed you to use the switch all meta on defense. Where which really just I'm not gonna say it ruined the game, but it made it a lot harder to score when you were just able to X switch, switch everything. Raymond Green was a freaking beast for what he was. And we got the first instance of a Trey Murphy clone. So Brandon Jennings, despite being one of the shiftiest point guys in the league, had the six of a big man. This. He couldn't dunk, but he had all the big man dunks, dunk animations. Trey Murphy clone Brandon Jennings. And then, for some reason, you were able to buy the Marcus Cousins <laughs> on the auction. Yeah, I remember this, out. too. You could, yeah, I just it was, don't it was get it, but you were. Like, it was actually cheaper to buy him in the auction house than lock in the event cards for him, which was hilarious. Because you could sell so him. Stupid. Like, anyone who bought one of these five or six could sell the card because he wasn't an original owner. And then every now and again, you'll see one of these popping up. Allen Iverson was the level 40 award. And I don't I care. Mean, this dude was yeah, horrible. he was an Opal. I get it. I get it. The guy was an Opal. He was the first Galaxy Opal in the game for the vast majority of people. Allen Iverson sucked. Allen Iverson was genuine. Even people who hyped him up and tried to use him, they weren't good with him. Genuinely awful. Like, I wish I got him. I wish I could say he was good. He was terrible. He was awful, lads. Then the Christmas Day packs came out and Look Santa BG was out in full force going over these cards. Again, I really liked what they did, like giving us a good Scotty, a good Michael Jordan card. It was the fine. The 75th just, concept. There was five of them this day because they basically just gave us... This good. content drop was good, but again, for Christmas, we should see good content. Of the so, same cards. I mean, <laughs> Rudy Gay was the best card for his price in my team at 60k. And LeBron was okay. <laughs> Steph Curry was pretty good. Evan Mobley Ruby was okay. Stuff were terrible in the set, though. Evan Mobley. Right was after bad. that was actually this was my first day hey, living in my new house, but um, the bots then came out. So Aaron Gordon and John Wall were in like the vault and the wheel, and so on the wheel, vault wheel and ball drops. So the auto buyers bought so many of these cards that they were literally putting up hundreds of them at the same time at two and a half k. This is how I made so much MT. I think I had a hundred Aaron Gordons in my auction house at one stage. Sold them off for four k like a week later. So 2K had a disaster of a season three. So the devs basically season three really was bad. They did introduce clutch time, cards for a month. And they took probably three this weeks off too. to just release like pre-planned content. And with it being around Christmas, people weren't happy and like rightfully so. Understandable. Again, the devs took time off, but we didn't know. We didn't know for quite a while. 
And then 2K stole my idea word for word, bar for bar. They took my moments of the month idea for their comeback. And in fairness, they implemented it well. Moments of the month was a really interesting concept. I hate it, Moments. Sorry, DBG. However, I know it was your idea. I I, I did not like Moments of the Max month. Max Struess. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Like, it's just like... That one card was interesting. What is Moments of the Month doing? Well, we I, ended up getting a... Horrible DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan. Who was terrible. Like, horrible. Like, what DeMar DeRozan needed, like, 18 badges to be good. He didn't have any of the key badges. He didn't have any of the good ball handling badges or shooting badges. Just a waste of time. I don't know why he was, why he was so bad, but he was. The best card in this set by far was like Jalen Brown. There were way better cards. In yeah, Jalen Brown, who we literally him. already saw like and a pink Rose, diamond of. I don't know. I don't know. They just really did not just make it good. I think I added some badges to him. And he still was not the greatest card in the world. And then the Max True situation. So his challenge was so hard to do that they basically changed his release from Sesha Four to Base Four, his three point challenge, and they gave every card in the game who had Sesha Four Base Four. And funnily enough, with Steve Kerr, they gave him base four on his base card, but he had an Evo card, and you actually, he when you Evoed Steve Kerr, he actually got no changed way. back to Sesha four. That's He's bad. the only player in history to get an Evo downgrade in my <laughs> team. That's funny. I didn't even know that was true. So that's funny. Season four was good. So season four launched with a pretty decent dev block. Again, with how bad season three was, it kind of had to launch well. It talked to me how there was going to be a lot of change in the game mode as well as the fact that it was gonna, well, he'd be celebrating Year of the Tiger. I thought it was gonna be a lot more Lunar New Year content. But in terms of rewards, Yao Ming was available day one, which was actually kind of big. And he was maybe one of, he maybe not the best, but we one of the best level 40 rewards. rewards. He was good. Reggie Lewis was the Kazzy main was one. good. But in terms of like seeing through series cards, it was an okay batch. Like Kevin Durant was really was good. good man. Was really, really good. Even Jameson But this was playing, fine. surprisingly enough, didn't have half quick first step. So you were seeing guys still running his uh, diamond until they could find a badge to play because the diamond was better than the opal until he got badged up. Kazi was also a freaking mm -hmm. beast. The only issue was he was RNG. And we got uh, Joe Johnson Joe was good. For the first time, which it was, was cool. Good. Again, you guys can see here 150k um, XP was available straight that away. And so Grossi, good, Grossi got him first. So then we had the Tuesday packs where they got rid of the 75 concept. There wasn't a guarantee to be an NBA 75 card in every Tuesday pack now. And guys like Donovan Mitchell were headliners. It was kind of cool. Each of them were a theme. I don't exactly know what cold blooded meant, but like we got like defenders in like... some packs. We got dunkers in other packs. It was kind of a cool concept in my opinion. I guess, Remember but these cards are not good. Four, man. We got the freaking be all and end all packs. We got beasts. This set a set was which gave us so 5,000 MT, Josh Smith, Darius, Miles, and Bob Sir, who were incredible. Chris Stapps and AK were really good. Oh, yeah. And Lamelo, Ja, AD, and Yanis. Oh, yeah, this guys. set was literally AD crazy. Up. And then we also got the rewards. Get Jason, Jason Tatum was good, push. and I like these playoff push rewards. Oh, I like this. That playoff push gave us so many good cards. Like that pink diamond, um, DeAndre Ayton was a top five center. Yeah, I liked team. playoff push, Obviously, man, a um, lot. The best small forward in my team at that time was the Jason Tatum card. So that was a really, was really there. cool I don't know if he was the me. best, anyway, but he was definitely was up that there. They gave us really good free cards, and that was probably in terms of pure content, that day was the best day. I think it was like the 22nd of January. All I know about that, it was the day before Leeds lost to Newcastle and I was at that game. But that night, we knew that someone was going to very soon, once they completed the playoff push, someone was going to very soon get the first Gary Payton. And it was in fact B Street Bully. Junksta got him a few hours later, but B Street Bully was the first person this year to get a Dark Matter card. Gary Payton was so I'm mid sure though. B Street was also the first person to get Dirk as well. We then got a very, very disappointing flash drop. Some yes, okay cards yeah. for budget players. I and mean, when I say okay, I mean okay, because like Lynn was expensive. CP3 Oak wasn't was that fine. bad though. Cool Coach was fine. And like Embiid was good. And that Michael Jordan wasn't even good. We then on the Tuesday got the Lunar New Year packs. Some of the most disappointing players I've ever seen. But we did get a really cool moment to the month drop because Devin Booker was very good. Yeah, Debo Jaron was Jackson good. was really good. Vando Gary was Trent, I found, was a very good player, mainly because I didn't mind base 16. And then some other guys, like Jared Vanderbilt was okay. I would assume he was good. And some of these rubies like Canard were good. Then we got, obviously, the Lunar New Year. Big Wang. Big Wang was a letdown, and, though. Um, Yiji and Lian was pretty good. But Wang Zhiji was the guy that we all thought was going to be God because of how much Talk rubies about a letdown. And they basically let made his pink diamond a copy and paste of Ruby. Stromont Swift was actually pretty good. Then they decided to give us guaranteed Dark Matter packs that you could choose. This was the coolest thing ever. It was like... Lonzo, Anthony Edwards, 
Carlos I feel like when have... this came out, nobody knew exactly what it was, but it, this was a W. Derek Rose, Jalen Rose, and I can't even remember who the final player was. On James Harden, that was who it was. But you had a choice of all of them. This is a W. I don't care. Man. This Edwards. is a W. Realistically, or cat. I'm sorry, Timberwolves fans. You were getting one of the best cards. In yeah. The game. Can we talk about why they made very both and, and cat bad? But then like 2K what? basically just stopped. 2K stopped at the start of the season, giving us NBA 75 cards. So there was like eight to go, and it was like three and a half months after they started it, and they'd given us like four in the previous five weeks. So it was really confusing as to what they were doing. Obviously, they were stalling it because they wanted to give us Dark Matters. But it was just really badly timed. I thought they released way too many in Season 3. They released not enough in Season 4. It was just a really weird situation. I feel like the NBA 75th, whatever it was, it just went on way too long. It just went on for way too long, in my opinion. As DVG just said. And then 2K accidentally leaked that there was going to be Dark Matters coming for All-Star Weekend. So this pack just this. showed up for some people. Some people Obviously, thought it was, was fake, no Dark though. Matters in that pack. And... Like, I don't even know what this pack exactly was. A Flash 5 Deluxe. Well, it was a Flash 5 Deluxe pack. I don't know what I'm talking about. People that But um, basically, fake, right? that pack know, just showed not. up randomly. And it had a description for Dark Matters. We found out we're going to be in three Dark Matters, which was kind of crazy. So, obviously, whichever the next drop or batch of And I remember this is pretty early still, though. People weren't going to be too hyped unless they were something big. And I'm not going to lie, they were something big. Like, obviously, now looking back on it, this wasn't crazy. But this was our first time getting point guard Simmons. And he could kind of shoot. Especially in this game where everyone could shoot. Derek Anderson. This drop wasn't bad. But, like, looking back on it, it's like, oof. Like, JT Thorne for budget was fine. Thurl Bailey was good. But Evo it's like. A beast. Kevin Porter Jr. with his Evo. A beast. Wilt was fine. 75th card badged up. A beast. Splash even started the dude in 250. Paul George with his Evo. A beast. Thurl Bailey with his Evo. Absolutely but just like insane. looking back at it, it's Cards not that good. Like Quentin Richardson, who really sucked. They were all really good, in my opinion. And then, for the third year in a row, at least one player was an WNBA player. So, um, Josh Hart, again, <laughs> Josh Hart had the Trey Murphy SIGs, which were horrendous. And then. It's crazy how they get mixed up with player WNBA players. Good. I don't know. So like, I was in Minneapolis when this dropped, and thank God. Something I thought was really cool. I'm not going to lie. I thought this concept was cool. Like, we've already got our 99 speed 9 and everything taco fall. It's not that unrealistic to see Ronnie 2K in the game when we already have that. I thought they were going to give us celebrity cards. They are going to give us WNBA players. But no, they tr they fumbled the bag so badly with this. Because if you guys can see, if you try to play a game, one of the players can't play a Yeah, if you could play online with these guys, sure. There should be never cool, be a card that can't play a multiplayer. Not. Like, they didn't let us use these celebrities or they didn't let us use our my players. It was not. This is the first year they did it. It made no sense. Then they announced the first Dark Matter cards Kobe Bryant, Tracy McGrady, and Russell Westbrook. And my god, that's the backlash when these cards came out was crazy. All three of them came with normal timing on their release, which is kind of nuts. Yeah, these and cards were dark matters, but they weren't great. With the Kobe, Eagle I liked though. Or the All Star agendas. I didn't like them very much. These are horrible. None of these cards are very good. You get like a Larry Bird. If you evo these cards, you get other players. But you get a Larry Bird. I just don't get if Dominique if the rewards play. aren't good, None then nobody's good. gonna like them, bro. Like the rewards gotta be good. The, tiers, the cards were very weak. All Star Moments cards came out, and again, that was a copy and paste of another card. Mobley was okay. Hey, Allen was, was a scrub. Okay. Jay Sean Tate was a six four power forward. Crash Tachua was an undersized power forward center. Obi Toppin was meh. Darius Garland was six one. Steph Curry was a copy paste of a card we had. The other Mobley two were fine. was all right, but the rest of these were just very very disappointing. Jude Allen was okay, was not great, but he was okay. Then they announced the NBA, well, 75 lock-in rewards for the 1990s and the 2000s. Now, I don't know why everybody voted for Clay. Or, sorry, 1990s, 2010s, 2000s. And then we started the Vote Zion Trolls. Basically, Clay Thompson was going to be a freaking demon no matter what. And we didn't know whether 2K were going to update Zion 6. My thing was, if they updated 6, we were going to get a god-tier Zion. And if they didn't update 6, we were going to get... Um, a bum Zion and screw over to all money spent players. The vote Zion nearly won. It nearly won. Yeah, too bad Clay won. We just started too late, I think. So coming into season five, we got the like Paolo Bancaro Duke card, expecting a lot more college cards. We didn't. They promised a lot of dark matters, and in general, the blog read pretty well. Like we had a new domination. We had um, a Dark Matter level 40 reward. I just feel like the Ray Allen is Again, not... It was going to be pretty nice. It was going to be Ray Allen. We got 
Again, Ray Allen's more fine, more but dark matters in he's not packs. great. Let, uh, they said the NBA 75 collection was going to be done. So we got an awful lot of just really decent news from that dev blog. However, towards the end of the season, I do think season five kind of faltered. It did, but big I, time. I think it was pretty okay. It was pretty okay to start off. However, these awards weren't great. Other than like Cincy Power. And that's the problem. Like, what is season five? Yes, I know we get Luke in this season, but like season yeah, five, I just did Bobby not love meh. it, man. As far as the rewards, really good it was not good. By the end of the season, he was pretty meh. Uh, Ray Allen, again, was good for his time, but he ended season meh. And the rest of them, like Carl Malone and stuff, for collection rewards. However, this pack was ridiculous. Kawhi was a beast. Can't Splash argue that, man. Power big. Within was good. Like, Splash used him 250. If you could get away with non No Scotty Pippen slander either. a huge body. Cade was the best point guard in the game, and it was not even close. He was the best by so much. Like, I would have Cade as one of like, the most iconic players in the game. It wasn't for another point guard that came out literally one week later. Literally but right next to him. He also got the cheap cards. He got Bonga. He got Lance. He got Pau Gasol. No got way he's going to slander Scotty Pippen. That's crazy. And then also we got this dude oh, right thank here. Gosh. Like, one of the best cards in the game. I mean, he was, he was like, super good. Thank you, BBG. He came out with, this card was Zeus. It was absolutely nuts. I couldn't believe how cheap this card was. He was a brilliant player. Like, Scotty could handle, he could shoot. There were no flaws at all with Scotty. His release was a little slow, but that was it. it we got easy Paul Millsap, who really sucked. And I mean... Huh? This card was fine. What is DBG saying? Really, really sucked. And then we also got the Iron Fox for... Complete. What was so bad about Paul Millsap? Am I missing something? He was needed to get Vince, but also the Iron Fox really sucked. Paul Millsap was not yeah, bad. People don't want to hear it, but DR and really Fox really was sucked. bad, but Paul Millsap really was not sucked. bad. I'm not taking any we Paul Millsap. Pretty okay exchange award, to be honest. Because so let me get this straight. If you are We're the hyping up Sidney Moncrief, but saying that Paul Millsap sucks. Okay, got it. Noted. Players needed. They went to like noted. Whatever. If you already had the Bucks players when they were like 800 empty, you actually got a pretty good card in Sidney Moncrief. He was a top eight or nine point guy in the game when he came out. And for some reason, 2K brought out like coaches. And people were paying like 200k MT for like plus six coaches. It was mad. Like you were getting like a. Plus I paid six like 500, 500k for, for Don Nelson. Like 40k MT. I paid a lot for Don Nelson. It was mental. And then when you went to like the Galaxy Opals, you were paying over a million for Don. Yeah, Nelson. I paid like 800k. Look, Don was maybe. good, but he didn't even give a three point boost to your centers. Like freaking, he wasn't even the best coach in the game. It yeah, was, he was. There he was. Just run Porzingis with 90 speed, man. Whoever the three-point coach. Like, y'all, a lot of people think, like, so in the box. Y'all got to think outside the box. Sure, if you're running Yao, you know, or a Will, where there's somebody with, like, a 65 three-ball, it's going to be tough. But you run a high three-ball and uh, get a guy that Don can help? For, um, Simple. Galaxy Opal. Again, I haven't used the Galaxy Opal coach, so I don't know. But, like, people were paying literally more than any player in the game for Don Nelson. And it really was not that significant an upgrade over using like a, a Steph Curry or a Monty Williams who was like 35k at that stage. Mm. So the first person to get the level 40 Ray Allen this season. It's a pretty, pretty big upgrade, Evan I would Tanaka. say. And this card here was again, he was one of those mid, players that mid, was really mid, mid. good when he came out. No, he was still like, mid. Kenny Zeus ran him in 250. He was really good. It's just right after he came out, he became outclassed really quick. The people forgot how good he was. If you like, he was a top two shooting guard in the game, top three maybe at worst. No. When the day he came out, just because of how good his release was, how easy. Maybe the day he came out, but I'm running power within Kawhi over him. I'm running Scotty Pippen over him. I'm running Dark Matter Kobe over him. I don't he care, man. With the guy. And just well, how much he was just able to cook. Obviously, he became much better with the Evo later on in the year. But it was just funny he didn't even have that, quick like, dribble style. Week, like two, three of the best shooting guards in the game. Like the only ones you could really argue on his level were like. Freaking Kawhi and Scotty, who were different players. Kobe too. Then we got Clay, who was probably a little bit better than Ray Allen. We got Clay and Dwight Howard. Galaxy Opal Clay was better than Ray Allen. Dwight we got. It was the first of March. Man, disrespected by the NBA with a 75th card, or not getting into 75, and also disrespected by 2K not getting a card after March. And then for the second community vote, which was 1980s and 1990s, uh, bots took over. Like Cedric Maxwell, at one stage had 80% of the votes or something. And then suddenly he had 30% and Thurl Bailey gained like 80, 000, or gained like 40,000 votes in one night. It was just crazy. And then Cedric Maxwell got vote botted again. And it this was crazy. It's like 2K wanted us to have a choice and we didn't because bots minute. took over. I mean, and even though Mullen ended well, nobody really wanted him. 
So we got the maybe greatest drop of the year. We got maybe the greatest drop because it came with some decent budget players, a god tier player, and I mean god tier player in David Robinson. But also D Rob, Luca, Rudy, even Hedu. All those cards are good. <laughs> Literally just shoot the ball with him. Not really. I can push him to the wing and he just greens. Like, like just shoot the ball with him. That's another green for Luca. You just need a tiniest. You don't even need a tiny bit of space. You need that type of space and it's green. Yeah, you don't need any like space. If you end up getting a yellow contest, just know most of the time you will be able to hit that shot. Like, Luca's a joke. Like, what? Like, is... if we're seeing DBG do this, yeah, it's a joke. This? You know what I'm saying? I'm like... literally just pressing the shoot button. I'm literally just pressing the shoot button. It... I mean, of course he misses that one. Of course he misses that one of all of them. That's the one he's going to miss. He got nervous because he was wide open. Walk it down, walk it down, walk it down. Literally, I'm playing 2K21 right now. I'm playing 2K21. I'm just shooting. I mean, I guess. Got to agree now, one, DBG. Luka Doncic was the most broken player we had ever seen in a My Team game. Like, I could not believe. I still can't believe looking at that game. This is my first ever game using Luka, and it was just green heavy after green heavy after green heavy. <laughs> like, nobody could even defend Luka. At least as the years went on, better defenders came out. But like, at that time, you literally just shut them on people's face and they were going. Yeah, like, Luka Doncic was so joke. good that there was a 43 half badge. And this isn't even like a 50, 60 half badge. It's a 43 half badge going for 6.6 .6 million. Is it coming up but you guys, really you got to realize, yeah, people for 250 wanted the best up. of the best, you and know. Luka Doncic and so you had to do what you had to do. Really, really great cards. Six and mil is ridiculous, though. Yeah, he was going, this card went for like seven and a half million in the end. That's just crazy. tournaments happened. On the current gen side, Splash won. On the next gen side, on PS4, Definitive won. On the next gen, on the current gen side, on Xbox, the winner was Swaggy. And on the current gen Xbox, I'm just crazy. So first round, So was facing off against some guy, and he's up by like 30 points with two minutes to go. And he gets and fried. He gets booted offline, and he gets kicked out of the tournament because he got booted just offline ridiculous. with 30 or two minutes to go. Not great. And then the Ty Debo situation happened. So Ty ends up getting locked out of his Xbox account, and they make there's like no alternative the way the rules are they then kick him out of the current gen competition they delay his next gen game so he ends up getting in and winning the next gen tournament after being down like 20 something points on um i think he was 25 points down in the very first game against aot trey yeah uh, i think i was down 22 and i don't know I how i came back this, but... that i think ty would have won had ty made it to the final on current gen i think ty would have won and also i think that if he had a one on current gen, he would not have come back down 25 points on AOT trade. That's probably true. You know, everything happens for a reason. I'm a believer in that. And so, you know, I, do I wish I would have got locked out? No, but it, was but crazy it is what it is. Splash winning on the consoles that they were probably least favored in. It was also during this weekend that the great Dunktober Jokic was discovered. During the stream, 10 or 8,000 people or something watching my stream, everyone just spamming Dunktober Jokic. The great Dunktober Jokic was found this weekend. Then on the Tuesday, we ended up getting the rewards. Don't tell Maxwell. Me, which is crazy. We also got moments in a month, which was kind of Seti cool was really because, good because like Jab was good and some other cards were good. And it was our first like the free dark matter. But Seti was really the prize of this day. The base three six eight two guard with seven one wingspan. He is you so better good. believe all four finalists for two fifty k were out here running Seti Maxwell. The guy was a freaking demon. He, he was, was a so freaking good. demon. Lads. Like literally then so we got good. Maxed out two. After Ewing was good. The worst set of the year we feared. We did have some fear, but Maxed out two was a pretty good set. It was not Again, good, I don't think. But we're in basically every budget squad. I guess, yeah, budget followers. The was rubies okay. were terrible, but I mean, every other card was okay. And well, magic kind of sucked, but eh, I didn't mind that set too much. Then we got introduced to the, the best big trend I'd ever play. Forget Ty, forget Splash. The great Trent, Trent man. Before and he beat them. The greatest 2K player the great he Trent, ever man. played. He would play you and he beat you and he would let you know. No matter who you were, Trent played everybody and he beat them. And he would let everyone know. And he got a pod. Everyone know and he, he got a podcast. Look at how much he's tweeting, dude. And as well as that, Trent also had a podcaster. He had a podcaster. However, the, the joke kind of died when he actually went on a Twitter space and it was like a 25-year-old man. It made it even funnier at the time, but I mean, it was the kind of the meme died with that. Once his voice was heard, we, the meme. And died. I feel like he stopped really tweeting that much. Saint, I don't know. Saint Patrick's Day, lads.
St. Patrick's Day, Pat Burke locker code. What a freaking day St. Patrick's Day was. I was so happy. Dude, you love this. finally released Pat Burke. Like, I used to literally get angry when they would release random Celtics players and be like, oh, it's for Ireland, and then proceed to call it St. Patty's Day. But no, this is the first year we got Pat Burke. I had so many people being like, oh, you, you got you got 2K Pat Burke. It was not me. I, I would love to take credit for that. I'll take credit for Dunk Tober Jokic. I'll take credit for moments in a month. I know exactly the person that got us Pat Burke. And I have thank I thanked that person so much on that day. It was so cool. Pat <laughs> Burke was a player that like there was no M you couldn't really watch NBA in Ireland. So the only real basketball I was able to watch is when the national team were on TV. And I thought that Pat Burke was like Michael Jordan. He was like Michael Jordan watching him play. For He's, he was not good in my team, though. Like, the only basketball I watched when I was that age was like Irish National League basketball, which is like second tier in Ireland at my local club. And then seeing Pat Burke playing for our national team out there as a legit NBA player, looking, I genuinely thought he was like the best player in the world. Then the next day, we that got is cool that we got him. It, it, if that's you know how big of an inspiration he was. Bracket busters. I didn't find this to be a particularly good job. Wade was good. And uh, Noah Kareem was good. Like, Ferry was good. This Ferry was probably Hansborough right. was okay. Hansborough this was, was okay, a good but, drop. I, mean, I don't Noah care. Noah definitely had a lot of harsh. He was a beast. Then for the 250k final, so Splash ended up beating Swaggy 2-0 in what was a closer series than it seemed. Game two was really close. Swaggy had a big lead. Splash then just hit everything to come back and win. Splash won and avenged himself from last year. And he also won on the gen that he was least favored on, which was kind of crazy. That, again, Ty and Splash won on the opposite gens. And then a really annoying thing was is that like literally definitive lost the game because of a disconnect. Because of a power and, 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 and this stinks because, I mean, I, the option they gave me was to restart the game in general or to, uh, to take the win. The problem was I was already up by 10 after the first quarter. So it's like, I, I wish we could have just replayed with the spread or whatever, but that wasn't an option. And, and, and now everybody's like, Ty, you literally just won because he legged out. Which, I mean, who knows what happens in game two, but I was already up 10. I mean, I was playing well, finding my flow, which it was just a bad situation in general. This is why they need to fly people out. But shout out to E, man. We had a, we had a super good series, but kind of wanted to, to, to tell y'all this situation. Like, I really didn't have a choice. It was like, I, I basically I got the win and it is what it is. game two. But still, that's not like that put him in no position to play game three. Ty already had the momentum. Once the power came back, Ty was ready and Ty pulled it out in game three. Either way, he did cook me in game one. I will say, run. if you make the final, you're still making 50k. So yeah, obviously 200k is a lot better than 50, but 50k is also a year salary for the vast majority of people. So congrats to all four players. That's all four. Then they went and released the spotlights the next week, and I'm not gonna lie, this was kind of disappointing. It was, but Ralph because was it just okay. It didn't feel like a spotlight. It was completed. It was able to be completed in three hours. It didn't feel like spotlight sims. The challenges for the individual player, you had to like do challenges with Slim individual players, was fun more too. players, and that just wasn't the way spotlights used to be. The spotlights used to be a bunch of cards at the same tiers. You could choose which ones you grind for, and then you'd lock in for bigger tier players. Whereas you had to like go, you could get like a freaking. Well, you had to do tier by tier, but it just didn't. It just didn't have the same feel. I don't know what how to describe it, but these cards weren't even that bad. Like Salim was pretty good. It Salim just was did good. Not have the same. I like Ralph, Leitner, Danny Manning. They were okay then 2K too. Then 2K went out and gave some people some dark matters for or some pink dimes for free, and then they also gave them a potential free um, Nicolio. Why so do I not remember you this? Playing my team in other years, and you stopped playing it. 2K gave you a bunch of free cards. And a lot of people got really angry at this, but these cards sucked. Like, am I the only one that, that like, had any, like, sense with that? Like, these cards suck. Why well, don't even so remember this happening? I don't even mind. Like, all that it did was when you ever f saw a lineup and you saw any of these cards in, you knew it was a beginner player. All it did was, like, make it show who was a bot and who wasn't have used these cards. So you could literally get, like, rubies better than all of these. They were all terrible. Out of Position then came out, which was kind of a... That MJ set, changed the being game. Honest. Out of Position had... Some really nice players. Like ben Wallace was good. Jimmy Butler was really good. If he, as a Mobley player. at shooting guard was good. Rosen was okay. Giannis was pretty nice. But the one card really... A lot of decent cards. The one card though that completely took over was this Michael Jordan. He was like the Luka for current gen as well as... Being MJ was literally Zeus, man. It was Zeus. He was so damn good. And until June, it was him and Luka in the 1A, 1B for the best players in this game. Jordan was so good. I still run this Jordan in my squad. 
And then 2K, once the 75s stopped being um, in the game, 2K literally just started just releasing um, Super Packs on Tuesdays. Just disgusting. As their content. So, Season 5, from about halfway through, was literally Friday drop. Once every three weeks, some sort of a grind. In the last four weeks, it was just Friday drops, Super Packs, and the one spotlight grind. So I think Season 5 ended terribly. I think it ended terribly. Like, they did go and give us a Dark Matter token reward, Thorough Bailey, which was good. That was a good... In- Thank God we got... It, it, it was bait, but he was good for those guy. couple of... Actually, to be fair, I had the tokens get Thorough. Imagine if I got... I would have been much happier getting Thorough in the uh, to- or SETI in the token market. But, like, this Thorough really was not good. He really was not a good... He was not bad. I, I don't want the slander. He was fine. Later. One thing I did like, though, to end season... What else are you going to use tokens on? The I mean... Set. Basically, a set where a bunch of guys that had really, like, mediocre, if not terrible, SIGs or jump shots got them all updated. Like, Manu went and got a better jumper. Zion Williamson went from Zion base, which was unusable, to base three, which was incredible. Trey Murphy we was had Trey the Murphy. gem of this set. And then two guys with Trey Murphy SIGs in Rudy Fernandez and Brandon Jennings with better SIGs. I just thought it was a really cool concept, and I wish they did more of it later on in the year. Then we also got Vince Carter. I was not a big I think fan Vince of Vince Carter. Man. Was a really good card for his time. I think it was probably. And I like Vince, maybe but it was I, worth doing. No, nah, you know what? Vince wasn't bad. I'm not even going to sit here and say it. Vince him, wasn't bad. Better on current gen than next gen. Now. Well, they take quite a bit of time. I think it's one of those situations with Carter where if you did it, you're not going to regret it because he was one of the best small forwards in the game. But if you didn't get Vince Carter, I don't think you regret it either. Vince is good though. I remember Seymour's got him and I used him in like wagers and stuff. So season six launched with a dev blog and is it was this, kind of interesting. Well, first Josh of all, the Josh Giddy level 40. I thought it was cool. Like I think mm. everyone predicted it was going to be a tall point guard based on the trend they had been going. I predicted Lamelo and ended up being Josh Giddy. So playoff moments agendas were cool. Like it made sense then why they just stopped moments in a month and they just didn't have moments in a month for April. But the playoff agendas were horrible. But I did not like them. In general, I was most excited about this part. Literally saying we were going to be getting a reward every day. I didn't even This care was good, were man. I really didn't. I was just happy to be getting something every single day. And I knew once it went to Amethyst Diamond, we'd get something cool. Even though, funnily enough, the golds were better than the Amethyst and Diamonds. But Chill. Diamond Roka was a goat, man. Chill. Like, the orange rewards were good again. Like... Silas was good. Uh, Albert King was really good. Worthy wasn't great. Matt Calvin wasn't great. Worthy was but solid. We ended up getting Albert Giddy King was, was nice. good. And Bob Nedlicky. Bob, Bob Nedlicky was, was the second the best goat. unlimited reward this year after Gary Payton. GP, yeah. He was the we got some good unlimited rewards. I'm not even going to sit here and, and he was actually the first set shot 25 player until endgame. The only non-endgame set shot 25 player in this entire game. Zero he might have the best set, set at 25. While Blake was a damn beast for his time, he, he got outdated fast. Uh, Zach Levine still can be used to this day. Blake Paul was good. Great. The rest, but the I, budget I don't guys know were so nice. Because these, these were like the cheapest Opals as well. Like these Opals went down to like 15K. And David Thompson was 8KMT. I don't KMT, so love super cheap. Thompson, And Josh Smith was just like a just, 5KMT god when he came out. I don't love these. Now, how uh, can we forget that? How can we forget the GOAT of this day? The GOAT of day one. Of season six last. Who's this? Rondo? Rondo is him. Yeah. They then came out with equal chance backs. Obviously, takeoff was or Rose wasn't the first one, but this was something I really liked. Equal chance Again, packs was good. I, I can't I did wait for like packs this. to be banned in games, but I think this is the most consumer friendly way you can do packs. Then Himothy came out. Lads, Himothy was so good that I recorded videos about this guy while still off my head on whatever medication I was on during <laughs> surgery. This was the day I got my Achilles surgery, and I was off my head on whatever the medication was talking about Himothy. The next day, the auction house completely, completely broke, and I still wasn't fully, fully, like, there. I wasn't fully there in terms of coming down after surgery, but basically, what ended up happening with the auction house was no new cards were showing. So you were seeing, like, the, clo- the like most recent card what the heck is going on? that was in it would be, like, two hours and be a huge gap. So cards went so expensive. Anyone who wanted to buy a card, there was, like, none of them on the market. And that after is one stage, crazy. there was no card in the game that was under 1,000 MT that was still on the auction, which was crazy. Then that night, they announced the greatest card. I remember DVG history. loved While this, While I'm not man. taking credit for Pat Burke, the guy who was the reason we got Pat Burke knows who he is. 
I am fully taking credit for Dunk Tober Jokic, lads. D bed G. It was so good it almost forced D bed G to get out of bed. <laughs> That's how much how, how hyped I was on Dunk Tober Jokic. In um, reality, it was absolutely horrible. Out. This might be the most disappointing fan favorite set we've ever seen. Like, yeah, because one of the three dark matters was uh, Bum Jokic. Find. Sim was not great. I didn't like Caruso very much. I didn't mind Caruso. I didn't like Winslow. Kazi was a beast, and Porzingis was only okay. Yeah, this Kevin was Durant not was that great of a drop, good, though. He was super expensive. In general, yeah. was not great. Other than Dunk Tober Jokic hype, I just wasn't the biggest fan of this set of cards. Then we also got a really good, and I mean really, really good, Easter pa uh, Easter packs. I just, the eggs were, so I don't know, man. We got, like, a bunch of packs for Easter where you could end up getting, like, Easter eggs. And it was like a... Remember what we had at Christmas with the candy canes and presents? It was like that, but way more, like, refined, and it actually worked well. It was okay, a but, like, people, a problem is if you waited to open your eggs, you could do empty. nothing with them. A lot of people got a lot of really, really good know. things out fine, of those but... Easter packs. I grinded the heck out of the game because, again, I was trapped in bed. I couldn't redo anything else. And I made so much MT off those. You Easter could packs. definitely make MT, crazy. absolutely. Then on the Saturday, for some reason, they ended up giving us the playoff playing agendas for like Trey Young. And yeah, those it guys. was weird that it was on a Saturday. I it remember was very, this. Very, very weird that it happened. I remember on that. A it was weird. Like just randomly on, it was just dropped at a random time on a Saturday. It didn't drop on the Monday like it did all the others. And this was the only playoff agenda to drop on a Saturday. This was the only content all year to drop on a Saturday. It was very, very weird. And then we got Shango. For some reason, 2K gave us an Emerald Center with base oh. three. That is yeah, kind of just a weird kidding. thing it to was an think Emerald about. Center huh? base three. Like, it had, they, had 2K given us in like season seven, a Dark Matter Shangoon, one of the best power forward in the game. Then we got the guaranteed Dark Matter pack. So it was like Jimmy Butler, Carmelo Anthony, Damian Lillard, and Chris Bosh. I did not like these, bro. Obviously, these not the greatest cards in the world, but it was the first time you could actually Speaking choose. Speaking of Chris Bosh. Um, Dark Matter, which I thought was really, really cool. I actually bought Mello, which Chris I really Bosch shouldn't have at the end of the day. Right but then we got these packs right here, the glitch packs. And I crazily enough called these endgame glitch Bosch. packs. Oh Little did I know what was coming. If it was only Invincibles, yeah, you could say these guys, cards are usable in endgame. Little did I know what storm yeah, was little, coming. Little did you know, DBG. Dirk Nowitzki also was out today. I'm pretty sure... Imagine trying the these cards in endgame. Yeah, I just don't know. Street, Junks, and Manny, I know where the first tree. And... Yeah, Dirk was not great. Like, Dirk really was not a great card. Like, he could, he held his own. He was a fine player. I'm not going to say he did anything particularly. Dirk was pretty good but, as an invincible right But the one right thing I will out. say is that Dirk was not the prize. The real prize was the 80 half badges. Because true. Junksta went and put up his Ben Simmons hollow first. He ended up getting 18.3 million for him. And people thought, okay, it was a 78 Can y'all imagine? Man. Um... Ben Simmons, there's no way any card overtakes that. Well, Manny's got 21 million. Nir Manny got 21 million for his Michael Jordan, and for some reason, the second Michael Jordan that went up in the auction house sold for 25 million. 25 million. Can y'all imagine? Absolutely nuts. Just absolutely nuts. 25 million. Then we get the first batch of actual playoff just, moments cards. Do y'all realize how much VC, like how much that costs? And we also it's got just ridiculous. Who, just a god tier six. But in this batch, we actually only expected one Dark Matter. We ended up getting four. Mikhail Bridges was good. Marcus Smart was good. Dennis I just James did not good. like Rest playoff moments. In my opinion, were very, very weak. I know a lot of people might have liked them. Playoff, playoff moments to me was not fun. Ones over this, to be honest. We also got Invincible Shaq, who we thought was going to be the best player in the game. Because we saw he had like Quick, he had Kobe Escape. We thought he was going to be God in this game. But the, thankfully for us, Shaq still had stamina issues and... Shaq also just couldn't move well. Talk about this mid realize, that no matter what SIGs and stats they give to a big man, they're never really going to be able to move like a little guy in this game. Then we also, towards the end, got a Julius Randle in the road to the 99 overall card. And he was so terrible, they had to update his badges. Julius Randle was not He was good. so terrible, they had to give him like seven extra Hall of Fame badges when he first was released. The uproar was so big with that card that he ended up having to be upgraded. Then we finally got a fun card in this game. We got Stevie Francis. I mean, Steve Francis had his own size. He was up. a 98 he overall. Was like he, was, he was fine. He was decent player, other than Rose, to have a good size up. And then 2K went and gave us one of the best cards in the game for free. This card a was card that is so still good. To this day, more than usable. Absolutely. They gave us RJ the, is so the good, free man. I don't, I don't care. Man. This card is good. And I remember the way we were all like super hyped about. 
We were I'll hide this card into the moon. I mean, he's good, the, man. Steve Francis because of how he moved. However, Richard Jefferson just has the same dribble six. They gave him Steve Francis dribble six. So they were like we were super hyped to Steve Francis. Then they basically gave us a six seven, better defensively, bigger, stronger, better jump shot. Steve Francis. Like RJ Jefferson was, was so still, good. And still man. is to this day unbelievable. I love that card forever. And we got these signature packs. Honestly. They were okay. Limited was a mess, though. Bobby I did not like Limited. Packs in the game. Wilt was all right. Lamelo was meh. We also got the first time we could choose our limited reward. The five reward Dark Matters were the five limited reward players. And unless he chose, Fultz wasn't even that good. And Fultz was, like, so much better than the rest. It was unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, just kind of I like an okay way to end season three. six. Not a great way. Not a bad way either. And then we also got one last playoff batch of cards. Jimmy Butler was good. I mean, Finney Smith was meh. Didn't Finney was Smith meh. was pretty good. I mean, other than Jimmy, was there, there was no one really that great, to be completely honest. It was pretty much just Looney Jimmy. was fine, but it, it wasn't anything worth too much. Season 7 was fine. Season you got 7. The dev blog again, was just kind of more of just saying the rewards. We ended up getting a nice, like, fearless batch of cards. We also, in terms of rewards, level 40 was okay in Anthony Edwards. Horrible, man. It was horrible. Was the, he was the prize. He was the card everyone wanted. So clutch time became hell. It became hell. Then going into like season seven, these packs were all right. Like Ferry was good. It also it pushed the price of Dark Matters. Man. So no Dark Matters were under 100k. And by the end of these specific packs, Dark Matters were like 70k, which was really cool for just being able to get Dark Matters in your team. Then we also got Z3PO. We got the uh, Quickie Mart Zion, lads. We got the Yellow Arm Zion. This card is horrible. I don't know who thought this card art was a good idea, but this was the card that every bot ran for the entirety of Season 7. Every new player ran this card. And he was little. horrible. So, yeah, you knew when you were coming up he for some awful. bad and player. Swish Packs came out. Swish Packs came out, and they were very, very interesting. I didn't I mind Swish Packs. On, like, it was like out of position, equal chance. Like, Peyton is an bad. out of position card. So is Nate. So is Siakam. Nate Thurman was a glitch card, and I didn't understand what the other, and so was Reddick, sorry, and I didn't understand what the other two were. Obviously, we had Hero, Steph, and Curry. And these had equal chance packs as well, except these gave you a 60% chance of getting a Dark Matter, which again was really cool. On the very, very first one that I opened on my account, I went and got myself a Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry, while messing around on my green screen and put myself in Ms. Kiff's background, we went and got ourselves a Stephen Curry. And then there was also a locker code for the like Del Curry for the Seth Curry. So if you got either of the corners, you were able to get this car these cards, which I did think was kind of a cool concept. Then I like this. We got I like first this. exchange reward. 15 TT online games, 30 TT offline games. And you Maybe got too much, but you could get them in a shorter amount of time. I did really like cool. this. So about three hours of playing over. I did like these this. updated every week. Drew Holiday was a beast. Malik Seeley was a beast. Bob um, McAdoo was solid. So Bob McAdoo was really good. The only one I didn't think was good, Dennis Johnson wasn't good. It was horrible. But um, Horace Grant was really good. So all of them except Dennis Johnson were genuinely really good players. They were really good players. And a lot of people like them this, naturally man. playing the game, which was cool as well. Then we ended up getting the mural for Joel Embiid. Manu Joel was Embiid incredible. Might be okay. the most disappointing card in all of my team. Yeah, he was disappointing. He very good. No doubt. We got a lot of free Dark Matters, a lot of free Galaxy Opals. And these weren't too bad. The only thing I didn't like about these challenges were that they just added domination on the end. They were like, okay. It went bad. I was cool with the difficult challenges. And then for some reason, they added on a domination at the end. Meaning that, like, the people that weren't... Yeah, good, because once you did get done with the hard challenge, it was just mindless the challenges couldn't get the cards. Or the people that didn't want to sit through Dom couldn't get the cards. So, it this definitely was not Gauntlets from 2K21. As much as they want to think it was, it was not Gauntlets 2K21. And then on phase came out that same day. Well, the same day on phase announced. Luka Doncic, Kawhi, Michael Jordan, Rudy Gay. And even if you got... This was a crazy draw. Eddie Jones, Drazen Petrovic, Popeye the Chicken Man. A ridiculous, ridiculous batch of cards, lads. Absolutely ridiculous batch of cards. And then we have got the new Swish Pack. Obviously, there's going to be videos of Ty for whatever content came out this week. Because this was the... Uh, this was the this was literally the day I thought I was about to die in hospital. I remember. Yeah, I remember. shout out DBG, man. <laughs> like, that was a that was a bad situation, man. I'm 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 just super glad DBG's okay. So you know what I'm saying. 
She, the dude's been nothing but but supportive to to me and the entire my team community, man. So I'm I'm glad he's okay, back, you know, in, in the my team community, and in, in at least you know, in a better position than than he once was, working, you know, back to Remember back very, to his very health, man. The so notification on my phone about Swish cards, and uh, not being in, fearing for my damn life. But yeah, um, I, I just um, gamma it's came unreal, out, ball, man. ball, thon. Never take y'all's health for granted, for real, man. Baker. Never, like it was, never do it, man. Gamma should have been a really good set, but at the end of the day, Gerald Wallace was by far the best player in Gamma. Bull Bull wasn't very good. Thon was okay. Bull Bull was, was good. Okay. I'm not taking the, any Bull Bull slander. Bull Bull was good. And so was Mikhail. It was just a disappointing set, in my opinion. Troynon then went and opened $3,000 worth of these packs. Yes, he opened $3,000 on stream. And this just kind of showed, again, like Troydon opened like $3,000 in these packs. He's opened, like, I think it took him $9,000 before he got an endgame card. He opened Jeez. 3K this day without getting a single invincible card. He only got like two bull bulls as well and three grand, which was crazy. It was just- Do you realize how bad those Baker. odds are? Basically, that is ridiculous. Every time he saw a Dark Matter. Then 2K went and gave us guaranteed Dark Matter packs. However, there was about 40 Dark Matters in the game at this stage, at least 40 Dark Matters. I guess how many Dark Matters it was possible to pull in these packs? Seven. Seven total. Can y'all believe Out that? Out of the 40, you could only pull seven, and they were the seven just worst Dark Matters in the game. Just unreal. An absolute farce. Every time 2K does, I hate when they do it, but they just always do. Then 2K added some Evo cards. In I the like game. Evo. Say what you want. I like Evo. man. Seen the season, but like this batch was really, really cool. I really liked when 2K just randomly added Evos. 100%, man. Duos. They uh, did this, this type of content is good. Nah, screw it. We're not going to do it in Season 8, which would have been nice to have seen anyway. And we got the end game magic. So 2K announced that end game magic was going to have the best six. And I was talking, and I was like, oh no, these cards can't be that different than Invincible. The only way that these cards are going to be that different than Invincible is if, because I assume when he said best six, they were going to just give him like D Rose or Stevie Francis and like either Curry Slide or Trey Escape, something like that. I didn't think that they were going to give they, every single one a base tier SHR 25. Yeah, and then and magic I genuinely came said that on Twitter. I was like, unless they give every single player base tier SHR 25. They're not going to be that different than like most of the Invincibles. But no, they gave literally all the end games base 3 or such. Which they, they did with like, the... We did not know what to expect they did, they when it came they did, to this end game Magic Johnson right here. Because again, we knew that end game Dirk was coming at this stage. We genuinely, genuinely were hopeful. I didn't like the end game concept as soon as it was announced. Because again, once I saw that the first three cards all either had base 3 or such 25. And they all dribbled the exact same. I was kind of worried. But funnily enough, but, but I, I thought they would change it up. Those guys scale. with Stevie Francis as uh, size up. They are the only end games with Stevie Francis size up in this entire game, which is kind of mad. So then the Origin packs came out. Origin packs had a few knockouts. Origins were not good. They had I the don't Gatekeeper, care. which is um, I, Bill Russell, I still like uh, Bo Cruz, but they also had Dirk Nowitzki, who if you had the other Dirk, you got this Dirk, which was a great reward to be honest. Yeah, end game Dirk was good. We also got our free Steph Curry that day, and they also gave us Bo Cruz, which was interesting. Obviously, Bo Cruz kind of sucked because his player bill was awful. His but they did give us bad. a Bo Cruz. He was fine though. He wasn't TTO horrible. Boards and TTO vaults, but they decided to never put them on the board of vaults. I somehow got him in a wheel spin. Don't know how to this day. And then that day I decided to complete the playoff agendas and it was a regret doing them. That is a long grind. You got it if you grind it for us that. Like five Golden State Warriors players. Y'all got it, man. But no. I didn't grind for it, man. Steph Curry. And this was the last version of Steph Curry we got. We didn't get an endgame Steph. I still don't believe that. And then they also put guaranteed equal chance packs in the auction house or in the market for some people. This only showed up for some people. But, like, if you could have an equal chance hero pack, everyone would have bought it, but not everyone got the chance to buy them. Next packs this year were Dark Matters with a 25% chance of Dark Matter. Next, next year, packs we were good. I don't care. Next packs, Dark Matters. they were good. We also got a couple a lot of, of Invincibles, and we got Endgame Scotty Barnes. Here's the dumpster fire of Season, season 8 and eight Season dev 9. Season 8 DevBlog. When I was reading through this, I was reading through all the rewards. And noticed that they didn't mention anything about actually grinding the game past day one. So I was fear. I was in fear. I was in severe fear that we were going to get absolutely nothing from this season. And then um, one of the journalists who got the original copy of this devlog said that there was originally an, something about agendas and 2K took it out. Which What? <laughs> no way. So they ended up to start off this. We knew Kobe Bryant was coming. So this wasn't a surprise to see Endgame Kobe. I don't think anyone was really shocked to see that because they did mention it in the dev vlog but what everyone was shocked to see was the fact that there were five dark matter shacks 
Yeah, this was definitely weird. Everyone was very confused at what this was. Like, when we read the dev blog, everyone, they said over a dozen Dark Matter Kobe's and Shaq's. Everyone was like, okay, maybe it'll be just like sprinkling them in throughout the season. Maybe it's a typo. Yeah, this no, is weird. we got five Dark Matter Shaq's. And some people thought, okay, maybe it's five Dark Matter Shaq's and one Kobe and some other cards. No. No, it was Kobe and Shaq. So, people were very... They did say Kobe and Shaq packs. I mean, we should have just listened, myself. I guess. I did not really like the idea. The idea wasn't the worst at the end of the day. But still, doing this for a whole season did not bode well for it being a good season. So many people were so just confused about Kobe and Shaq's that they didn't really care that much about the rewards. And the rewards were the rewards were fine. The only thing is, though, is that like they were the only end games that didn't really have end game SIGs. Which is kind of a bit disappointing. Like Endgame James Kobe Harden was, good, was the though, first care. one that I got on my own account. I got him quite early, but James Harden, Harden was, good. was just beating a domination. He, he was, was not fine. bad. I'm not gonna say like, he was, if you could dribble, he was good. He not was got to, but he was good fine in this game. Nothing wrong with the guy. He could play. He was fine. Then we also got Endgame point guard Jokic. A very he's slow fine, release. If they gave him a better release, he would have been a better player. He was not great. And it's not even me saying, oh, he needed base here. Assess 25. The issue is that Ray Allen on a big man is slow. If they had given him base 110 like they gave Chris Webber, I still think he would have been an absolute beast of a card. And Webber was pretty nice as well, if we're being honest. Webber was, was a pretty was nice fine. card. Not as and then we also cards, had the weekend but... of locker codes where there was like random missing letters in some of them. If you didn't have your blue stacks, you were screwed. I got a LeBron with from using the letter B as his um his letter but uh, this was the this was the weekend where V is for levels and levels meme became a thing like these locker codes were just oh man if y'all camped out for those locker codes y'all got it I, I I didn't annoying. even I didn't even then camp out for them and Carmelo. it was not this worth it people were still kind of a little bit hyped and at this stage this idea started growing on me because I was like you know what I actually do like these two player packs I mean then everybody can get the cards throughout the week which was kind of, again, disappointing. Because we did get Season 8 cards as well, but they weren't great. Then the Thursday, so two days afterwards, we ended up getting a Devin Booker card. So Devin Booker came out, and I thought that this card was going to be the first of the weekly Thursday locker codes. So I expected every Thursday to be getting, like, a Kyrie or one of those guys. Yeah, we did not, did we? Nope. Then we got Yao and Giannis. Got one Devin uh, Booker. For Yao and Giannis to be coming when they did on the 8th of July one week after the launch of the season you're thinking there's no way 2k can out through this there is no way 2k can out through this they've screwed themselves there is absolutely no way they can out do this but i mean you still knew taco later, was coming we got taco and say you know taco Definitely is no coming. way they can out do taco so we were expecting like freaking bowl bowl manu bowl all of these cards in in these end game packs but no 2k went back to realism they definitely i didn't outdo this they went back to some of the best players ever like we got T-Mac, we got Kai or Kawhi, guys like that. And MJ, not even an but it's MJ like... Braun drop could really hype people up. Mainly because Michael Jordan already had a really Yeah, I mean, how are you going to... And, and he's not even going to be better than the card. other one. I mean, and was basically end games, all the MJ are not, e all LeBron not even as good. So. Kind of sucked. so there was no real hype in general. And then 2K released the Luka Doncic and Kareem packs. And they made all the Luka Doncic and Kareem cards have the Trey Murphy sigs. And these are just the people were asking me, Ty, why are you even uploading a video on this? Well, at the time, you wanted to see like what six, positions seven, they played timing, and stuff like that. Leader, big dribble style, all the big man dunks. And everyone's like, oh, no, they're going to fix this. They're going to fix this. They're going to fix this. It's going to be fine. But uh, no, Luka Doncic couldn't even move. He was tripping over his own feet while he was dribbling. He didn't even have his own release. He didn't even have the set shot 25. He just had nothing. He was you an still bonus. You still knew they were going to update scrub. him, though. He was a 99 overall day one Trey Murphy which was extremely disappointing that they didn't change it. It took me making a video for 2K to change it. Until I made the video hours later, nothing. And then 2K just continued to troll us. Right after that, the final endgame batch. Was it going to be like a fan favorites batch, like Manute Ball and Bobo? No. Was it going to be a Steph Curry batch, a Jason Tatum batch? Was it going to be a huge batch of endgame cards just to end it all? And they could give us whole, so many endgame cards we deserve. No, oh they chose God. to give us Magic Johnson. This was so troll. They chose to give us an endgame card we already had. And not only an endgame card we already had. An endgame card that couldn't run. Magic, Magic Johnson, sucks, there's something wrong man. with him in game. He is objectively broken. He literally can't run. He literally can't run. And 2K decided to give us a scrub who can't run. 
instead of Steph Curry, instead of Jason Tatum, and even made him basically made him smile in the picture. Like, why is he smiling? 2K <laughs> trolled the living. We could have got so us. many and other games. wasn't even games. the biggest troll. So then the next day, I locked this in for the option packs. I locked in for the end game option packs. I this ended up getting really both bad. of them. I chose. I spent a lot of MT on these sets, so probably about a quarter of a million total. I didn't spend like the five, four or five hundred K. Some people did, but I should have sold the cards. So Yanis Antetokounmpo was a card that I ended up picking up, and I ended up getting him, and I ended up getting Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Which so, I mean, those are fine options. They're always going to play for you, I but it's just the fact cards, that I spent you overspent quite a bit of MT on these two cards. It wasn't like I got them for nothing. I spent quite a lot of MT. Such a so shame. then the next day, 2K decide to show us who they are giving us for the limited. 2K are giving us scrubs for limited. And 2K announced that these cards are coming the set the time the 2K were meant to announce content, which meant we were like, oh crap, are we actually getting no content? Yeah, everybody was so, like, is it over? The last content you know? drop on a damn Tuesday. And yeah, it turned out the last content drop was on a Tuesday. In Thursday, for preparation for something, the auctions bots were turned off. They're usually bots that will buy every Dark Matter 8.3k and every opal at 5.4k they were turned off and in the end 2k released guaranteed end game packs nobody saw this coming nobody saw guaranteed end game packs coming especially when it was ridiculous we thought there's another friday to go with the start of season nine there's another week of content like these packs were pretty good they made end games very very cheap but again 2k just went and trolled us the following monday by letting us spend our tokens like th this this was card. horrible like and i almost guarantee a lot of people spent their, their tokens on this and, and this one was in seven horrible. chance of getting a card that's worth more than 15k i'm not even kidding the worst the worst way to spend our tokens this was our last this was one of our last hurrahs this, this was horrible. one of our last hurrahs in content this scrub pack for 750 tokens and then this isn't even a season. Like, what is DDG even going to talk about here? was the biggest troll of all. Obviously, Magic was a big troll. Obviously, 2K making us lock in for the end game cards before giving us guaranteed end game packs for troll. Obviously, the Invincibles was a troll instead of giving us content. But the biggest troll was Season 9 being able to be purchased for 170K before Season 9 giving us invincible it's just sad that like you gotta grind this many games for jr smith and unlimited like are you kidding it me? was a thousand wins two thousand wins the top reward they made it so if you're playing tt offline you needed a thousand <laughs> wins in order to get vince carter let me repeat a thousand wins for a card that's 50 hey did blaze never get him does hey, anybody know one thousand wins and it got even worse it got even worse 2k went these and brought packs out so these packs from previous seasons for 11,000 VC. This is horrible. 11,000 VC for season one cards. VC only. Absolutely nuts. Made no sense whatsoever. And then to rub salt in the wounds. An equal chance invincible pack for 1,000 tokens. Just and sad. Like, where's the end game packs? There were no good invincibles in the pack. It wasn't like this was Luca and Jordan and stuff. And that's the no problem, invincibles. right? It's 1,000 tokens for 20k. I was hoping in Limited the last week, maybe we'd get like Luca, Taco. Yeah. And then... Nope. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. Luka Doncic, Endgame, who was the level 40 reward, in fact, was not an Endgame card. And you might be saying, oh, he is an Endgame card. Nope, he only had 65 Hall of Fame badges and didn't have any of the Endgame 6. I've never, I don't know how they did it. But they literally made an Endgame card, not an Endgame. I don't know how they did it. Surely, they messed up copying and pasting. They messed up copying and pasting. This is So crazy. anyway, that is the video. Overall, this year, I found it a lot more boring than other years in my team i feel like there was not as much wrong with the game i think until season eight it didn't really have any major low points very boring in season three there wasn't as much wrong with it i think the highs were nowhere near as good i don't think it did as much well as season as nba 2k 21 did i think that's fair that season it's six a pretty and season fair seven break, were yeah. really really good i think season eight is the worst season in the history of my team and i think season nine is a slap in the face it's not even a season who has played the whole it's literally year not even but a season. overall i do think that it was a pretty good year i do think overall i enjoyed the game mode i think there were a lot of flaws i think the game didn't launch well with the 100 i don't think there was a lot of i think a lot of the discussions and planning for the new game they didn't really think about thinking too much depth about how things can go wrong which is why we ended up with a bs draft mode which is why we ended up with 100 but i still think season six and season seven 
if they take some of the things they did in those seasons forget about the gimmicks like season eight with these double players if they can forget more about the gimmicks and focus more on the content i think we can have a really good year in nba 2k23 so overall i think this is probably i'm gonna say there was less wrong 2k21 and 20 but i still think it's probably even the worst year in my team we've seen since 18. see i don't know if i agree about that i feel like gameplay wise might be you know up there with the best Maybe content-wise, I agree with you. Uh, I, I think early on, you know, season one, season two, I had the most fun. But, yeah, the end of it is what people is going to remember, and the end just wasn't great. Hopefully, you guys got your Burger King out, your popcorn out. Enjoyed this video, guys. Massive shout-out to DBG. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.